Hey, what's up? And welcome back to another live stream with Gizmo Slip Tech. Today we're unboxing the Gigabyte G5. Now, the, this of course is gonna be a very comprehensive live stream unboxing. So that means we're gonna be uh, testing the performance of this laptop. We're gonna test the display out. We're gonna take the bottom of the chassis off. We're gonna test the laptop for flex. We're gonna play some games. We're gonna do some benchmarks. And at the end, we're gonna summarize everything. And in addition, we're also gonna be putting timestamps along the bottom of this video. So you can jump around to whatever area of the live stream you want to check out most. We're also gonna be comparing this Gigabyte G5 against some of the other most competitive laptops around the thousand to $1,300 range. So give or take 100 to $200. Um, and the other question obviously is, should you buy this RTX 4060 laptop versus say an older generation RTX 3060, maybe a 3050, TI um, that might have a better display or better build quality or something like that. So we're going to dive into some of those comparison questions as well. Try to keep the chat questions related primarily to the Gigabyte G5 for today or the potential competitors that are in the same ish price point. For the most part, I'll still take some other questions here and there, but Primarily, this is just gonna be about three hours of just nonstop awesomeness about the Gigabyte G5 to see, to figure out if this laptop is worth buying or not. Can I recommend it? Wow, I see a bunch of people in chat already. This is awesome. I can't wait to check it out. This is probably the best bang for the buck laptop that I have seen, at least the potential bang for the buck but we don't really know yet. We only have a 75 watt GPU, RTX 4060 in here. So it's not the uh, most ideal TDP RTX 4060. Now this laptop is also very thin and very light and very portable. So you gotta keep that in mind as well. It's, it's a much smaller laptop than the previous versions of the Gigabyte G5, about 22% smaller. And it's thinner, it's lighter, and it's certainly more portable. It's very small bezels around the display as well. All right. Uh, Albastia says, first question, is this worth buying? Well, we're gonna find out, <laughs> I don't know yet. I always try to keep an open mind when I go into these unboxings. I don't want to prejudge this laptop. Now I have set up the software on it, but I have not done any testing or anything like that, uh, just so that way the unboxing can go smoother. So let's go. Ugh. Black Dust says, been enjoying your videos lately. Keep it up champ, thanks dude. All right, uh, so this is the, uh, secondary box. There's another box that this came with. I bought this off of Newegg and there are links in the description down below if you want to pick this guy up or check the latest pricing on it because the pricing on this is going to shift around. I'm expecting this to eventually go on sale for like 800, 900, maybe even as low as $700 during Black Friday a year or two from now. Um, so this thing's definitely going to be going up and down in price quite a lot. Um, but it's a 15.6 inch full HD 144 Hertz display. Um, and you can see the box is actually kind of nice. You see that? It's got a Gigabyte G5 logoing on it. And um, let's talk about the potential specs that this has uh, right off the bat. So um, here is my laptop list. You can shop around and compare tons of different laptops on here, literally. Uh, over 100, 133 different configurations now are on this list. Um, the best thing you can do is find your price target. Over here on the left, I'm gonna set an upward price target of $1,300, okay? So now we have every laptop under $1,300 here, and I'm gonna sort by pricing, and I'm gonna do cheapest, okay? So our cheapest laptops, we have the MSI GF63, the Cyborg 15, uh, Acer Nitro 5, Gigabyte G5. That's basically the same version of this laptop, except it has an RTX 4050 for $100 less. So you can save $100 by going with that one. Um, this is the version of the laptop that we bought, uh, that we have with us today. So it's got 144 Hertz full HD display with an i5-12500H, so last gen CPU. RTX 4060 with 75 watts of GPU TDP, eight gigs of DDR4-3200 memory, and a 512 gig SSD. I like that they have a larger SSD in this one for this price point. Sometimes it's only 256 uh, for the budget models, but only eight gigs of RAM might be a, a severe limiter in games today, but we're gonna find out because we're gonna do several different games today. We've got uh, 
uh, Cyberpunk, we've got Hogwarts, which is extremely memory intensive and VRAM intensive. And uh, we've got a bunch of other games too. Apex Legends, CSGO, um, Shadow of the Tomb Raider, and I'm trying to think of Witcher 3. So we're going to do a bunch of different games today. Uh, and then, of course, we're going to run Time Spy and Cinematch R23. So in terms of how this stacks up, I think that this G5 is going to trounce the Cyborg 15 and GF63, I think. Um, just because these only have 45 watt RTX 4050 and 4060s in them. So this automatically has almost double the wattage, not quite double the wattage, but that's a pretty significant difference. Uh, and then I, I'm hoping, I'm hoping the display quality in this is better, but I don't know yet. We haven't done the test yet. We're gonna find out today if the display quality is better or not. Uh, and then I think some really good contenders for potential better value for this laptop uh, is gonna be like the Acer Nitro 5, if you can get one with a higher quality to screen, like this Nitro 5 has a 300 nits full HD, 165 hertz display with a bit of a higher end processor uh, and it's 1279. So it's a quite a big bump up in price, $180 more, but that may be worth it if it, you're getting you know, a better quality display and a and it has 16 gigs of RAM, so you don't have to upgrade that after the fact. That's nice. So those two upgrades might be worth it. Um, and there are links on here if you want to be able to buy almost any of these laptops. Uh, if they're on this list, usually there's links to be able to buy them, but some of them are still not available. So in terms of uh, best competitors right now, um, I, there was another one that was really interesting, and it was just delivered today. Let me change the price point and raise it up just by a little bit. Um, it is the Zephyrus G14. Where are you? Uh, well, the, here's another one. The MSI Pulse 15. This one's also going to be a very interesting and competitive laptop because it's got a QHD, uh, I believe, 240 hertz display for $1499. Uh, if you pay a bit extra, you also get an i7 processor and 16 gigs of RAM and a one terabyte SSD. So you get multiple upgrades with the Pulse 15. So for 1500, this one is uh, packing a lot of interesting parts in it and it's a higher watt. It's supposed to be a 140 watt RTX 4060. So you, you get increased wattage, better display, better SSD, better RAM. Um, and it's DDR5 5200 RAM too. So this one's really a higher performance laptop for $14.99 with a much better screen. So I think I think this one, I ordered this one, I'll be doing an unboxing of this one and a review of this one as well. So uh, you can just hang tight and we'll get that this one also reviewed. But um, this one has tremendous potential. At the $1,500 price point, this is the top pick for me right now based on specs alone. But uh, we'll have to see exactly how everything shakes out. The, this is another one that just got delivered to me today, the Zephyrus G16. Um, we're going to be doing a live unboxing. I don't think it's going to be tomorrow. Maybe tomorrow, sometime very soon in the next few days, we're going to do the Zephyrus G16 with a 4060, 120 watt, 16 gigs of DDR4, 3200, 512 gig SSD, full HD plus 165 hertz, 100% sRGB. So a better display, higher power 4060, i7 processor, 16 gigs of RAM for $350 more. So it's you're paying a big chunk more at this, at this price. It's like 25, 30% more in money, but you're also getting some of those upgrades. So this is another very competitive and fairly compelling option, but for $50 more, a QHD display seems pretty attractive to me on that Pulse 15, right? I don't know. Uh, so there's a lot of different options right now in this price range target, uh, but we're gonna find out, can I recommend this guy today? So let's, let's freaking find out, right? All right, so let's get this unboxing started. Let me check chat real quick if there's any other questions. Uh, Alvast says, I think it's worth very cheap and you can enjoy gaming without problems. This laptop can bring you a lot of fun. Yeah, I mean, that's a big part of the focus of these budget laptops. People wanna be able to, to game on a budget. They don't need anything fancy. They just need it to work well and be able to play games really well. And if you can do that, then you got yourself a winner for the most part. I think my biggest concern with the Gigabyte G5 is the eight gigs of RAM. It just may not be quite enough in certain situations. Like if you wanna do a lot of multitasking, a lot of browser tabs open, you might notice some stuttering or, or low levels of performance. 
especially if you have a bunch of browser tabs open and then you also go to game, then you have even less RAM to play for your games. So um, I think you really would want to upgrade this to 16 gigs of RAM eventually. And I'm gonna show you how to do that today as well. We're gonna break this part, uh, we're gonna take this puppy apart and we're going to open it up and see how easy it is to upgrade the RAM if we need to do that. So without further ado, let's get unboxing. All right. Um, do you think of RTX 4060 laptop will be worth it if I own a 3060 75 watt laptop right now? Uh, Elephant Tech X Gaming, it, it may not be worth the upgrade if you already have a 3060, right? Uh, I feel like I feel like it might be worth the upgrade for frame generation games, but that's only a select uh, small set subset of titles. But like, for example, in Hogwarts, I'm thinking this laptop's gonna way outperform what a 3060 can do when you factor in frame gen. Um, same in Cyberpunk, but in games that don't have frame gen, you know, I, I don't think you're gonna see nearly as big of a jump in performance. Okay, so here's the box. We've got the laptop inside. It's got these foam packaging. Um, and we're gonna pop over to the, the side cam here so you can see more angles here. So there we go. And voila. Okay, so. Here is the laptop. It'll be packaged very similar to this when you get it. So uh, I think this is gonna be very protective packaging. Shaboom, shaboom. And what else do we got in here? We've got these, uh, this set of manuals. Um, let's take a look at these real quick. Actually, I have not looked at this at all. So right here is an extra screw. It looks like maybe like an SSD screw. So you could use this to uh, probably mount a second M.2 slot uh, SSD is my guess. I don't know why else you'd have that. Maybe, I don't know, maybe it, it's for if uh, you lose a screw in the under chassis, but it's probably for the M.2 screws. So our warranty, I just want to see the length of time if I can find it. A one year limited warranty on the battery. Pretty sure it's a one year warranty in general. Do, 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 do. All right, and uh, this I believe is designed to go uh, under your M.2 SSD if you upgrade it to keep it flush. I think it's, you know, you pair these two things together for your SSD upgrade. And then right here we have our Gigabyte Quick Start Guide. Has some basic information about the laptop, the ports, how to get it going. Um, so overall, this laptop is chock full of potential. Let's Let's pull off the cover and see what it actually looks like now. Dun, dun. And then we're gonna take the bottom off, all right? So I, I, I'm very curious to see what their thermal cooling solution is for this year, because thermals on this uh, may be not as good as the previous generation of the Gigabyte G5 series, because that was a thicker laptop. Um, and it went up to 105 watts. So here's the laptop right here. And it has this, out of the box, it has this plastic cover on it. And let's just go ahead and, let's just go ahead and take it off. So opening it up here now. Shwam. Okay, so it has this kind of felt cover as well as a microfiber cover. So you get double coverage on the inside of the laptop, which is cool. And then we got this plastic cover. So they really are um, all about protecting the laptop, which is nice. So a quick evaluation of the laptop here. We've got uh, plastic on the keyboard deck, a soft touch keyboard with a number pad and lots of extra functionality keys. Uh, we've got a webcam here at the top. We've got, a, a, it feels like a glass touchpad. I, I don't know if it's plastic or glass, but it's as smooth as a glass touchpad, which is very surprising at this price point. Almost all laptops at this price point are plastic. So 
And then this is a metal top lid. Not a plastic top lid, a metal top lid, I think. Or is it plastic? It looks like it's metal, but I think it might actually be plastic. It's hard to tell. It feels like metal, but sounds like plastic. So I'm not sure. It's probably plastic based on the feel, but it's got a nice coating and texture to it. This is a very thin laptop and it's very lightweight, I would say, overall. I think it's less than five pounds. Um, and we have ports on all three sides and a pretty good selection of ports. We're gonna go over the ports in a little bit here. Let's take a look at the power brick before we continue. Um, so, so here's the power brick. It is not that long, about four feet long for this power cable. And then we pop, we'll check out the actual power adapter. This thing is small. It is a very tiny power adapter. Uh, and that's gonna be really great for portability once again, pairing that, uh, Pairing the small laptop size with the small power adapter is going to make this thing very mobile. Um, probably the most mobile laptop I've unboxed so far this year. Because the power adapter is quite a bit smaller than even what you get on the Blade series power adapters. And we're going to stack up this laptop against some of these other laptops. And we're going to see how big it is comparatively speaking. All right. So I'm thinking it's, I think it's gonna be about the same size as the Blade 16, maybe a little smaller in some ways and bigger in other ways. Which is, which is gonna be great for a budget machine, right? All right, so. Here we go. Here's some comparisons that we can we can do side by side. All right. All right. So there's the Gigabyte G5. Here's the Blade 16. Whoa, the Blade 16 is actually bigger. Yeah. So we're lined up in the back, lined up on the side. The Blade 16 hangs over the edge but the Gigabyte G5 is just slightly wider. So it's almost the exact same size as the Razer Blade. That shows you how efficient Gigabyte has been about reducing the bezels. This has almost no bezels um, around the sides. The top has a little bit, the bottom has a bit of a chin, but uh, still they've really done a, a much more efficient job of making the Gigabyte G5 series so much more portable, which is gonna be a lot more attractive for people that need something on the go. All right, so here's the Strix G18. So it's a, you can see the monstrosity difference here. It's a huge difference on the width and the depth and the thickness too. The Gigabyte is gonna be thinner. And the last one we'll compare with is gonna be the Alienware M16. So another 16 inch laptop, which is almost the same screen size as what we have in the Gigabyte. And it is, you know, two inches less deep and about a quarter inch or a third of an inch less wide. So this thing is definitely on the mo uh, more portable side of things when it comes to laptops, which is great to see. You know, here's, here's a laptop that's very competitive with this laptop. It's the Lenovo IdeaPad three and you can see the gigabyte is also smaller than the lenovo idea pad three now this has a 3050 in it i think or maybe a 3050 ti i can't remember off the top of my head but it's um i picked this up for 600 i still haven't finished the benchmarking for this guy that's why i have it still But uh, yeah, so this thing is, is definitely on the super portable side. Can you make a benchmark video comparing the 3060 versus the 4060? That's a great idea, I should do that. Um, that said,
It's very important to understand how this laptop lines up against the competition, especially previous generations. Um, NVIDIA and <laughs> NVIDIA and their silly marketing naming schematics uh, have really messed everything up when they bumped everything up by 10 this year with the RTX 4000 series. Okay. Oh, we got to, before we, before we turn this guy on, I think it's, we are still off. So before we turn this on, let's take the bottom off and see what we got going on inside, okay? Um, so NVIDIA with their silliness this year, they bumped the, the naming scheme of all of the laptop GPUs up by 10. So uh, this means the 4090 is the best laptop GPU this year and it's priced like the 3080 Ti was when it launched, okay? The 3070 Ti is priced the same way that the RTX 4080 is priced, and the 30, uh, 4070 is priced the same way that the 3060 was priced, or at least pretty close, maybe a little bit more than the 3060. And then this 4060 is being priced very similar to what the 3050 Ti was when it was launched. So. Uh, this is the fourth best GPU for the year. The RTX 4060 is the fourth best GPU. And in the previous generation, the fourth best GPU was the 3050 Ti. So if you want a, a direct product on a tier by tier basis, the 3050 Ti is the one you probably want to match this one up with primarily, but it's very fair to compare it with the RTX 3060 as well, because it is a 60 series. So uh, it's it's totally legitimate to pair both of, both of those up, I think. From a price to performance perspective, I'm going to focus on 3050 Ti as the main comparison because they're both fourth tier and they're both priced comparatively. But, uh, but yeah, I would like to see that this actually outperforms an RTX 3060 at 75 watts as well, at a minimum. I don't know if this will be able to beat a 3060 at full wattage levels or not, We'll have to see. Um, but I'm anticipating that if the 3060 is at 75 watts and this is at 75 watts, we ought to be seeing some nice performance gains. Now, I'm just using a Phillips head screw to take these screws out, and everything is going really well. No problems so far. The... Um, I can see some nice heat pipes coming through the ventilation and there's a lot of ventilation on the bottom of this. So we'll have to see what the cooling is like on the inside of this laptop. Because that's the biggest question in my mind is what kind of TDP and performance can we get? And I'm curious why they only limited it to 75 watts. Moang with the $20, uh, 20 Canadian dollar super chat. Thank you so much. He wants to know, what's the best 16-inch laptop? Currently, I have a Razer Blade 15. Uh, I like Razer because of quality build, but I'm debating if I should change to Asus or Lenovo with a 4090. I don't know what your budget is right now, but I, I'm leaning towards the Scar 16 being the number one 16-inch laptop. Um, but I really like the Blade 16 too, if you don't mind a hot chassis. I don't like gaming with a hot chassis personally, so the Blade 16 is not for me. But um, that's gonna be up to you. If you, and if you want to like, you know, run the fans on max with maybe lowering the power limits, you can make the chassis not as warm as well. So there's some tricks there. Now, uh, we're gonna talk about, we're gonna go ahead and take this, we're gonna take this bottom panel off. To do that, I need to get it started. I usually use like a picking tool here or something uh, to just get into the edge. Uh, sometimes I have to use the separation prying tool. And I do use this iFixit toolkit. There's a link to the toolkit that I use to take laptops apart in the description down below. Uh, and yeah, I do recommend the toolkit. It works really well. So I see a little gap over here. I don't know if I'll be able to get into it or not. Just trying to find a good starting place with these laptop chassis can be difficult sometimes. And I don't know, I believe, I be, here's, I think, a good spot. Yes. Okay, so right in the front right corner is a pretty good spot for me to get started. 
And usually once you get the thing going, it comes right up. You don't want to start, okay, so to be clear, you don't want to start in the back. The back is actually not, you can't even go in there, like overlaps. So you got to start in the front of this laptop if you want to take it apart. And I do also want to mention into the AM, there are t-shirts, there's links in the description for these t-shirts. If you're looking for some graphic t-shirts that are high quality, I definitely recommend them. And if you do use the link in the description, you get 10% off and a small portion of whatever you buy goes to help support me. But I honestly, I love their shirts because they're just really high quality shirts. I've had this shirt for a couple of years and it looks really great still. Okay, so um, yeah, and I love the cut and fabric too. Like they cut, they, they fit my body really well. Better than your normal t-shirt. Okay, so I'm trying to get it to come off the back end. The back does not want to pop up. There we go, okay. All right, beautiful. All right, so we're, we're, un, we're unlatched now. Let's get the camera repositioned so we can take a look at the internals. All right. So, this is always one of my favorite, this is always one of my favorite moments, taking a look at the inside of these laptops. Shaboom. All right, so, ooh, we got crucial memory in here. Interesting. Uh, that's some high quality stuff. And look at this too. We have another spot open for an M.2. It's immediately available for upgrade. We've got a 512 gig solid state drive here. I'm trying to see what company it is. It was made in Taiwan. It was, it's, it's like K-I-O-X-I-A, -K so like Kioxa, I believe. Yeah, it's like Kioxa is the SSD brand, but the RAM brand is a Crucial brand, which is very interesting. Crucial is a high-end memory, so it's nice to see them putting in some nice RAM on this you know, more budget oriented laptop. So we've got a crucial eight gig DDR4 3200 sodium with CL22. If you want to get a matching stick, you could just buy one eight gig crucial stick uh, and you'll be able to get your exact match. And you could obviously just pop it right in there and you'll be good to go. For Wi Fi, we are using an Intel AX 1211. No, AX211, NGW. So Intel AX211, NGW. Um, and all right, so our thermal, let's talk about our thermal pipes now. So we've got our GPU right here. We've got an i5, I5 CPU here. We've got one dedicated heat pipe to that I-5 that goes around to this exhaust. And then we have a big shared heat pipe between the CPU and GPU that comes around to this exhaust. Looks like this is gonna be used to help cool our VRMs and that's gonna also transfer some heat over to these heat pipes, so that's good. Um, and then we've got two dedicated heat pipes to the GPU over here and of course all of these Metal pads will also transfer some of this heat over to these heat pipes, but it's not going to be that, it's not going to be as good as having a direct heat pipe over them. So we'll have to see what the temperatures are like in this machine. It's only a 75 watt GPU, so we don't need too many heat pipes. I think this will be enough to keep the GPU at a reasonable temperature. Um, and this is an i5 CPU, so that means less cores and threads than other like i7 or i9 CPUs. So I'm thinking this will be enough cooling to at least get us decent performance. But, you know, this thing is a budget laptop at $1,100, so I'm not expecting extreme levels of performance. As long as it delivers satisfactory levels of performance for the price, I'll be happy. Now, we've got a 54 watt hour battery right here. And uh, it's interesting, it's kind of like an L shape. So our two speakers are on the sides here, two two watt speakers. So these are bottom firing and I wouldn't expect too much on the sound quality side on this machine, unfortunately. Um, that's pretty much 
going to be the case with any budget laptop that I've ever tested. Okay, so it's time to put this thing back together. And let me also check chat and see if there's any questions. All right. So, Patrick says, Gigabyte always lets me down. What? <laughs> um, okay. Turbo Man says, sad this laptop isn't using Intel's 13th gen CPUs. How big of a difference is 12th gen versus 13th gen in gaming? Um, that's a good question, Turbo Man. I think that the difference uh, for, for most games between an i5 13th gen and an i5 12th gen is going to be pretty small, probably less than 5%. Um, that said, if you shop around some more, you can probably find some laptop CPU, uh, some laptops that will offer the new 13th gen. But it, the 12th gen and 13th gen doesn't make a huge difference on this low end. On the cheaper end, on the CPUs, it's really just not that massive of a difference. But when you go up to the i9 CPUs, um, the high end HX CPUs, you get huge differences between 12th and 13th gen. So we'll have to see what we get in Cinebench, but I'm not anticipating that it's gonna be that much different than what you would get with a 13th gen part. Okay, so let's go ahead and re-screw everything back together again. This laptop's overall pretty, pretty easy to take apart and put back together. Uh, Clyde Oasis with the $5 super chat. Thank you so much for the support. Um, he says, I have the G5 KD and I wanna see how the new chassis compares to that one in size and cooling. Do you still have the old G5? I do not have the old G5, sadly. Uh, that was sold uh, last year. So this one is thinner and lighter than that old G5. And I do like the build quality on this one just a little bit better. Um, I, Gigabyte's claiming that this new chassis is 22% smaller, and I believe it. Um, and we also have lower levels of TDP on the GPU. It's kind of a trade-off. You get smaller, smaller size, more portable, but also lower levels of TDP. Um, but with the new Ada Lovelace RTX 4000 GPUs, the lower TDP, I don't think it's going to be that as much of a deal breaker as previous generations. You're still going to get more performance with higher levels of TDP, but... Um, the new 4000 series is only on a four nanometer process, which is a huge improvement over RTX 3000 series. I think they were on a eight nanometer process. So it's much more power efficient. So at the same wattage, I'm thinking this should outperform a 3060 that was at 75 watts by a fair margin. Um, I don't know if it'll outperform a 3060 that, that was at uh, 130 watts, because this is only 75, but it would be an interesting comparison, right? A 130 watt 3060 versus a 75 watt 4070. I don't know. But thank you so much for the $5 super chat. Okay, so hop in, plug in this in. Yeah, this thing does look nice. This The one thing I will say is the old Gigabyte G5 just looked like it was from a previous generation of laptops. This one still still looks a little bit outdated in some ways, but it is much more modern in the general design. The aesthetics on the, the imprinted on the top of the lid here, this looks much more modern. Um, and it's, the keyboard still looks like a little bit older, but like the touchpad also has accenting to it. So there's, I don't know, it's, it's pretty, the design is I think much cleaner looking and looks classier, which is great to see, I love that. Okay, so we have started up. He said, uh, Clyde says, I, my RTX 3060 is actually on a different V BIOS, 115 watts instead of 105. Nice. Okay, so here we are. And you can already see the display. The display quality does appear to me as a higher quality display than what was on the Katana, but not by a lot. I have not done the display test, and I'm very curious to see 
what the display quality is on this machine because that really is going to be a big factor for which laptop people end up picking in these lower end laptops, uh, like the more budget oriented and mid range laptops. Like if you can get decent performance and have a better quality display, then that's a huge boon, I think, in the budget segment. So, um, yeah. All right. So, I have, uh, so one thing I wanna point out right at the beginning is I had issues with getting the, the control center to work for me. I had to uninstall the default control center and download the new one from Gigabyte's support page and then install it. And then I was able to get in and use the control center. So it's very important to know that. Now, if you press FN and press the exclamation point, that turns on max fans for you. Automatically, like it's a quick hotkey, which is pretty sweet to know. And then I believe uh, FN plus the three switches your power mode. So you can go from uh, like high performance, entertainment, battery savings, uh, which tries to switch you out of your NVIDIA GPU, um, and then also back to high performance. Now, if I go ahead and pull up, uh, well, let's talk, let's talk about the keyboard for a moment and the trackpad, all right? So this keyboard feels very nice. I think the keyboard is, uh, it's got nice spacing overall. We've got tons of functionality. We have a full row of F1 through 12 keys. We've got a full-size number pad as well. Now, and full-size arrow keys, right? So this has got a lot of things going for it. Uh, the backlight does light up all of the secondary functions. And I'll go ahead and try to turn off this, these lights here so you can kind of see this a little bit better. Um, all right, so the, um, the key thing about this keyboard that I like is just that it's got the full functionality and the key travel is decent. It doesn't feel like a super premium keyboard, but the functionality is there. And when you're looking at a budget machine, you want easy to type on all the functionality there if you can. We've got dedicated home and page up, page down. We've got the number pad, that's the full size, that's the default formatting. We've got a delete key, a backspace key. Um, I like that. We just don't really have uh, much for play pause type of keys. So like our media keys are not there. And I also do not see any keys to turn on or turn off the keyboard backlight feature. So I'm gonna go ahead and pop into the, into the control center here. And I'm gonna change the backlight so you guys can see the different colors. You've got a bunch of different color options. It is an RGB keyboard. So you can go to like yellow, you can go to uh, green, different shades of green. You can go to more like a turquoise uh, and then kind of a greenish bluish and then go into blues and then to purples and pinks and orange and red. And now we're coming back around again, back to the green. So I'm just gonna leave it on blue. I think it looks pretty good. Um, and I think that the the keyboard and is, is an overall a solid keyboard for a budget laptop, so I'll say. Okay, uh, touchpad. The touchpad is a good size. It's bigger than the Katana touchpad. Like it's taller and wider than the Katana touchpad. And the texture, I think it's plastic, but it feels more like a glass touchpad. It slides smoothly across the the, the surface. It's hard for me to tell. I think it's plastic. Pretty sure it's plastic, but it is very smooth sliding, which is great to see. And the click is good overall. You can't click at the very top very much, but all around you can click very easily. All right. So uh, inside of here, I can turn the, the keyboard backlight off inside of the control center as well. So there is that. All right. So... Let's go over the control center software. I'll pop down over here. There we go. All right. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and turn the light off behind me.
just so there's less overall reflections coming off the screen here. All right, so here's our uh, here's our software to control the laptop. You can see that you can activate and deactivate the camera. And there is a hotkey. You can press FN and uh, F10. And that can activate and deactivate the camera at a touch, a quick touch. Um, you've got four different power modes. You have performance, you have entertainment, power savings, and quiet mode. Um, and power savings mode, I believe, tries to permanently turn off the NVIDIA GPU um, as long as you're in that mode. So it says applications using the NVIDIA GPU will be shut down in power savings mode. Switch to power savings mode, uh, click OK or cancel. Now, I believe this does not have advanced Optimus. So I believe we're using just regular old Optimus for this, which will mean that we're gonna get better performance with an external uh, display, which and which is kind of a bummer. I believe that's the case. Let me let me double check that. Uh, but as far as I know, all indications are that this is regular Optimus. So popping over to Gigabyte's website here and looking. Yeah, I'm not seeing anything indicating advanced Optimus, um, so which means almost always that it's regular Optimus. And as far as I know, there's not a MUX switch in this laptop. So what you're dealing with is a slight reduction in overall um, performance in CPU bound games like CSGO. So I'm expecting the performance in CSGO to be a bit lower. Um, Cool, so that's the basic. If you wanna change the keyboard backlighting, it's inside of here. You can pick the color that you want the keyboard to be, and you can turn the brightness off and on inside the software here. Uh, and you can also set macros up with the control center, which is nice. Uh, and you also have battery charge options. So you can charge the battery only up to 70%. Um, only, so only charge the battery when under 70% and stop at 80%. Um, and you can also do maximum battery charge, so you can go all the way to 100%, or you can do custom, so you can set it to whatever you want it to be. Um, and so this is, this is great for making your battery last longer. You can essentially, like lithium ion batteries should be good for many years of usage if they're not kept at 100%. So I would highly recommend setting this to uh, 80% if you're gonna use the battery often, uh, unless you're discharging the battery every single day, then maybe 100% is okay. But if you're gonna be only occasionally using it, keeping it at 80% is, is okay. Uh, the best battery percentage to keep it at is 50%. If you're not you're gonna use the battery at all, just keep it at 50% and the battery should in theory last much, much longer, okay? Um, Elephant Gaming says, you can still use the external monitor to bypass Optimus. That is correct. And there are a number of external display options. We're gonna go over all the ports here in a moment. There's a lot of display options on this laptop. So um, you're gonna be able to definitely get your video out on this. I'm not sure which, uh, I'm not sure off the top of my head which ones are connected to the NVIDIA GPU though. So we should probably check that. Uh, Cause you'll, whatever display you plug in, you'll want to plug it in directly into the NVIDIA GPU if possible. That's what, that's how you bypass the Optimus bottleneck. All right, so um, let's go ahead and do that. All right, so we're popping into NVIDIA control panel here and we're gonna go to configure physics. So the laptop display is connected to the Intel GPU. So that's gonna show us that we're, do we're not using a MUX right now. It looks like the mini display port on the back is connected to the NVIDIA GPU, but we're not seeing, there is an HDMI on this and there are also two USB-Cs. I don't know if the USB-Cs have DisplayPort 1.4, but they are gen, there are USB 3.2s, so, um, so yeah, it, for sure the Mini DisplayPort will bypass Optimus, and that's probably the DisplayPort um, that you're gonna want to use because H, especially if you want a high refresh rate display, the HDMI is only a 2.0 
on this. So you're not gonna be able to do ultra high refresh rate QHD monitors with the HDMI. You're gonna to wanna to use the mini display port and you can use an adapter uh, from mini display port to HDMI if you need to. So can we buy renewed or refurbished laptops on Amazon? Um, you can, if you want, it's obviously way more risky buying refurbished laptops. And I don't necessarily recommend it. Uh, if you play esports only look for a 4060 with a good screen. Um, yeah, you would want a good high refresh rate screen with no ghosting. And I'm not sure if the screen has ghosting or not yet. I need to actually get in and play some games. Um, I need to play some esports games to be able to tell. Okay, sweet. So let's go ahead and just, let's go ahead and just go ahead and just, just test our display. Because I really want to know what the nits brightness on this is, what the color gamut is, and the contrast ratio. So we know we know what we're dealing with when it comes to display quality. So we're going to use my Spider 5 Elite. I've already installed it and got it set up. This is this is a tool that's designed to test the quality of dis laptop displays or really any kind of monitor display. So we're gonna set this back. We're gonna set, go into display analysis. We're gonna do gamut and brightness. All right. So that's as far back as the monitor goes, by the way. You will not be able to go any further back than this. And we are at 100% brightness right now. Okay. Checking chat. Maybe a high wattage 4050 will be enough for esports titles. Uh, yeah, I think, uh, I think honestly, even a low wattage 4050 and 4060 should be able to handle esports titles at at least 144 hertz on... 1080p for most of them maybe not warzone but like apex legends and valorant and csgo and stuff like that we should be able to get at least 144 frames per second i would think with these laptops so we'll see okay so we need to do the brightness and contrast yet all right we're set and we need to go all the way down to zero percent brightness And then we're going to go up to 25%. So now it says, hey, Brandon, will there be a video on the Alienware M15R7? And if not, do you think the specs are good? Uh, what's the price, Snowy? So for that, that, that spec range with a 3070 Ti, i9, 12900H, with a one terabyte SSD, 16 gigs of RAM, 360 hertz, I don't know. I just don't think that that's going to be worth it unless it's less than probably $1,600, $1,500 would be about where I would pay for that when compared to, um, when compared with the new RTX 4000 series. Um, switch camera. Okay, so there's the camera. All right, so we need to go up to 50% brightness. I believe we're at 50%. Um, and I gotta say just, even if the brightness on this is not that good and it turns out to be less than say 250, um, I think someone who's not that picky with the display might be okay with this display. So I don't know, let's see what the results are before I speak out of turn here. I'm just saying like, just looking at it, using it, it seems like a little bit better than what the Katana had, but it may not be, maybe it's gonna be worse. I don't know, we'll, we'll, let's just see what the results say. That's the best way to do these tests, right? Um, I see, thank you, it's refurbished too. Yeah, I think, I mean, a lot of people say, oh, frame generation is not really worth it, but I did a slow motion comparison side-by-side -side test with frame generation and it, it looks so good. I think frame generation is a very good tool for single player games. So if you play a lot of single player games, frame generation really is amazing. All right. 
Okay, so here we are. We got 62% sRGB. Keep in mind that my color gamut checker tool underestimates by about 10%, right? So it's really closer to about 70% sRGB, 46% Adobe RGB, and 46% of the P3 color gamut. And then for brightness, we got 15 nits on the low end and 261 nits on the high end which is about 40 nits brighter than what the Katana had. So yeah, this display is better than what the MSI Katana had. And the contrast ratio is also better, 840 to one. Um, it's not an amazing contrast ratio, but it's still good. It's, it's better, I think the Katana only had like 720, I believe. So overall, this is a better display. It is a higher color gamut display, but not by a lot. I think it's only a few percentage points better on the color gamut area. But the brightness being 40 nits brighter is going to be more noticeable. Um, and in general, I would say if you're going to be looking for a higher quality display, you really would ideally shoot for 100% sRGB coverage. And you probably can get that if you're willing to go down to a, like a 3050 Ti graphics card. At this price point, at $1,100, you can get 100% sRGB coverage, maybe at $1,000. Right For $1,000, you might be able to get 100% sRGB coverage in the right laptop, but you're not gonna be able to get that, I don't think, with a RTX 4000 series laptop right now that I know of. Um, so we'll have to see. Overall, the display results are mixed. They're not as good as I would ideally love, that's for sure, but at least they are a bit better than 220 something nits, right? 260 is a lot better. Uh, and the contrast ratio being better bodes well. All right, let's find out what we get in Cinebench R23. Uh, how is the screen though? Are you happy with that? So I think people would be more happy with this display than the one on the Katana, but this one's still not the ideal laptop display. Um, for more casual people who are not as picky with their displays, I don't think this one will be as much of a deal breaker. I really wanna see what the ghosting, and when, you, when we actually play games, I wanna see if there's any ghosting. If there's no ghosting in the display, then that would definitely make it much better than the Katana, because the Katana did have ghosting in addition to the lower end uh, color gamut and brightness. So we'll have to see. All right, so here we are. We're in Cinebench R23. Let's pull up HW info as well. We'll do, we'll do one run. We'll do one run with no HW info, but uh, let me pull up high performance mode. So we want to be in performance, that's correct, and we want to be in maximum fans. You guys can hear the fans. They're not as loud as most of these other gaming laptops, but I'll, I'll try turning them off and on a couple times for you to hear the difference. I'm gonna hold the camera about, uh, I'm gonna hold the mic about 10 inches in front of the laptop, okay? Here we go. So overall, the fans are quieter. Um, I'm not sure what the automatic fans would ramp up to, but at least on maximum fans, it's really not excruciatingly loud. I mean, it will be noticeable in a quiet room, but uh, yeah, I've, I've been using a lot of very loud laptop fans and these are not as loud as most of them. Um, if I were to guess, I'm guessing like 53 decibels, somewhere in that range, 53, 54 maybe. Okay, multi-core. Workload, let's go, oh, that's a 10 minute test. We don't want that. Let's, well, we'll do it. We'll do a 10 minute test, but we're gonna do a, so we're gonna start off with just a regular test first. Um, is the laptop fully charged? Yes, it is. Mr. Alexander says, I have an Alienware monitor. So I think that's what that, AW34. Um, I think that's a 34 inch widescreen monitor and I don't, so I don't care what the laptop screen is. Yeah. A lot of people that are going to uh, be interested in this laptop are basically, um, this, if you're, if you're picky on your color gamuts, you're going to want to use an external monitor primarily, but at least the onboard laptop display is 
is brighter and, and a bit more color gamut than what the Katana had. It's still not my ideal, but yeah. Uh, I still, in general, would recommend an external monitor mainly if you're gonna use this laptop. Okay, so what do we get? 14,600. Now, I owned for two years a Lenovo Legion 7i that I paid $3,500 for, or maybe 3,800 after I paid for the extended warranty on it. That guy got 15,000. So this $1,100 laptop is doing the same amount as what my $3,500 laptop from two years ago did. Pretty insane, the, the advancement in technology making the best of previous generations essentially obsolete. It's, kind of, it's pretty crazy. Not obsolete, but almost. I mean, it's not, yeah, it, 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 yeah it devalues, the, it certainly devalues my very expensive laptop that I'm going to need to resell now. So um, we'll do one more run. Uh, actually, let me pull up HW Info so we can see what the power limit draw is and all of that. And then we'll get a 10 minute run started. So that's a pretty good score, though, for, I believe that's a good score for an i5. And we need to raise up the back of the laptop. All right, so let's get the back of the laptop raised up. I do recommend raising the back of the laptop uh, in general by about a half inch to an inch if you want to optimize your temperatures. overall okay so there we go beautiful uh wildfires yet says yeah the depreciation on laptops or tech in general is horrific because of the constant iterative improvements yeah well especially when they're competing when you have intel and amd competing and they're throwing out like monstrously revolutionary parts every generation or two it's like it's awesome it's awesome to see but also uh Buying a, a low-end mid-range laptop is going to give you better bang for the buck, especially for resale value, say, two years from now or three years from now. So, like, this laptop, if you were to buy it now for $1,100 in two years, this will probably still be worth, like, seven, dollars $800. But if you buy the highest-end, like, $4,000 laptop, like the Blade 18, you know, that sucker is going to come down probably $2,000 in two years, you know. So, all right. Let's... Go ahead and start. So our second run got 14,293, though I was messing with HW info. So here's our 10 minute run start. Um, I'm noticing that our temps are getting pretty dang high. Wow, we're pulling 91 watts. Holy moly. <laughs> That's pretty insane. Our temperatures are going up there too. But it's nice to see the gigabytes letting this sucker fly. Like, like it's flying, it's flying really high. Now these temperatures are pretty is pretty high. Keep in mind they are within the Intel rated spec temperatures, but in general I do prefer my CPUs to be in the 85 uh, to 90 degree range on the upper end. Um, so I'm curious to see what this ends up throttling down to, or if it ends up throttling down at all. Because right now it's basically thermal throttling rather than power limit throttling. Power limit throttling is where you say, don't go beyond a certain wattage, and then you're, so you're basically being limited by how much power goes into the CPU. When you're thermal throttling, it means that we're, sho we're shoving as much power into the CPU as it can take, and then we're hitting that thermal threshold instead of a power limit threshold. So, um, so if you wanted to uh, prevent the temperatures from going as high in this laptop, what you would do is you would install something like Throttle Stop or Intel XTU. And by installing Intel XTU or Throttle Stop, you can set the power limit to go to, say, uh, 70 watts instead of 75 or maybe 65 watts. Um, and then your temperatures will not be as high. All right, for our core clocks, we are doing... Uh, 3.9 gigahertz on our four performance cores and 2.99 gigahertz on our eight E cores. So that means this is a total of a 12 core CPU with 16 threads, which is a pretty good amount of CPU threads. And we're hitting decent clock speeds on this thing too at 3.9 gigahertz. Like you could definitely do video editing on this. 
You could definitely do uh, CPU intensive things and it would be basically similar in performance to what I had in my Legion 7i, this really expensive laptop uh, from previous generations. Now, we, I mean, it, it's gonna be similar-ish. It's gonna go lower, I think, with the 10 minute score because you know we're gonna be running into thermal throttling. Our score is gonna be a little bit lower uh, overall because in the initial burst, it's gonna be higher until we hit that thermal threshold. Um, so I'm thinking that the, my, my Legion 7i from two generations would probably be like 10 or 20% faster than this one. But still, for an $1,100 laptop, to be able to compete with a laptop that was $3,500 from two years ago is nuts. It is nuts. Okay, so, um, and for reference, for those of you who don't know, the new i9-13980HX has 24 cores and 32 threads, and that sucker does about 30,000 or a little over 30,000, maybe 32,000 out of the box. So basically this is almost exactly half the performance of what you can get in the new i9 chip. But you're paying way less than half the cost, right? $1,100 is a lot less money than uh, the, the cheapest i9-13980HX that I know of is in the, gig, uh, the Strix G18, which costs $2,500. So less than half the price and you're getting still half the performance. So that's good. Uh, Mr. Alexander says, regarding laptops, there's a huge skip which is shrunken down from desktop size every year, like five years, and you can throw it all up then in the garbage at that point. Well, you say that, uh, Mr. Alexander, but my buddy, um, you know, I, ha I had bought a Aorus X7, which is, uh, was a phenomenal laptop back in like 2017, 18, right? Um, it had a GTX 1080 in it and i think it did like what was it like nine thousand eight or nine thousand i think in time spy gpu test if i'm remembering correctly it was around eight thousand ish or something i think it was in that ballpark anyway um maybe it was a little less than, maybe it was only six thousand i don't know either way it was in the above five thousand let me just i gotta check it i gotta check it now that i <laughs> Now that I'm spewing numbers, I gotta try to remember. All right, GTX 1080 times by Horus X7. All right, so checking it out. So the Horus X7 was pretty sweet because it had a six core CPU for the first time in a laptop. Awesome, right? Yeah, it was awesome. And it had a 300 nit display. Oh, that's so bright back then. It was great. Um, and then it had 91% sRGB coverage. It was like top of the line from six years ago. All right. Uh, and our Cinebench, we don't even have a Cinebench R23, so we can't compare that. It's Cinebench R15. Um, Do we have Time Spy back then or not? We had Fire Strike. I don't know if we had Time Spy back then. But the fire strike score was twenty thousand. That's too funny, and it was getting seventy-one FPS in The Witcher Three on ultra settings. So <laughs> it's so interesting looking back on this. Okay, so all of that said, a six-year-old laptop, it can still play a lot of games really well at ten eighty p. Okay, if you wanted to pump, the, pump that puppy up to QHD resolution, it's going to chug big time on ultra settings. But at 1080p ultra settings, it can still do a lot of games. Um, obviously not with any ray tracing. Um, so you're going you're gonna to have limited performance potential on an, a laptop that old. But uh, like my buddy and I play Apex Legends together, and he still uses that six-year-old six laptop, and he's still hitting above 144 frames per second on his 1080p display. Um, so it's essentially perfect for his gaming experience. And every game he tries that with me runs flawlessly on good settings. So it's the kind of thing that um, it depends on what you want to do. Like if he wanted to play Hogwarts, 
he'd probably have to put everything on low or medium at 1080p even if he wants a gaming experience that's okay. But um, yeah, so if you're okay with low end, low end settings on games, you can make a gaming laptop last six, 10 years, especially if you buy a high end gaming laptop for that time period. So, um, but yeah, the value of the, that laptop nowadays is going to be less than a thousand dollars. And it was originally, uh, I believe it was originally around 3,500 when I bought it. So it was, it's now at almost a quarter of its value. Probably it's probably, yeah, it's probably a right around $800. If you were to resell it, $700, maybe if you were to resell it now, if I were to guess, cause it's still a good laptop. Yeah, I don't know. It's hard to say. Maybe maybe even only five hundred dollars. It's it's hard to say. It depends on who you could get to buy it, and I don't know if the guy if my buddy has damaged it in any way. But as long as everything's in good condition, it's probably six hundred seven hundred dollars for that laptop. Um, I don't know. It's interesting. Okay, uh, Wildfire says I think it was with the forty sixty forty seventy specifically that there was almost no difference or one or two frames in FPS between one hundred and thirty or Um. Can you show me on Microsoft Store the Control Center? So Clyde, what you're gonna wanna do is you wanna go to Gigabyte's webpage. Um, I have a link to Gigabyte's webpage on my laptop list. So right here is the page you wanna go to if you wanna download the support items. So you go to the top of this page and you click the support button here. And then inside of here, you'll wanna click on uh, your model, which is the 4060 model. Uh, if you get this one at least. And then you click Downloads, and here's all the driver updates. And this is where I downloaded the Control Center um, for updating it. All right, so here we're almost done with our 10-minute test. Let's take a look. We've averaged 72 watts through the, G, uh, th through the CPU. And I imagine if you were to repaste this, you might get even better performance because, um, you know, we're thermal throttling here. So if you added a laptop cooler, and you repasted this with some higher end CPU paste and GPU paste, you would be looking at lower temperatures and therefore you'd be able to push the clock speeds even higher. Cause we're not running at the maximum clock speeds for this CPU, not quite. I'm pretty sure it can go over four gigahertz on the P cores uh, when it's under a all core load. So, and the E cores could probably go to like 3.2 or 3.3 or something. So I'm pretty sure you're looking at significant potential performance improvements through repasting and um, like adding a laptop cooler. All right, so we're almost done. Let's see what we get. Dun, 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 dun. I love the new Scar and Strix, but I do not want a laptop to have the gamer-centric look. I look into the M16, but I want to check the G14 and G16 out before I consider anything else. So I've got a, a Zephyrus G16 that was just delivered to me today. So we'll be live streaming that soon. Okay, so 13,733 for our 10-minute Cinebench R23 run. That's very good for a budget laptop, I think, um, especially for an i5. I love that we have um, very high levels of performance from this machine despite the fact that it's more of a budget-oriented system. So let's check out the webcam. Oh, okay, here we are. All right, so here is the webcam. It's definitely grainy, not that high of quality. And yeah, even after the post-processing, the quality is still pretty meh. You're gonna, you're gonna end up basically using, um, <clears throat> you're gonna wanna only use that in like tiny window mode, you know, just for people to be able to see who you are. Um, yeah, so the, uh, the Zephyrus G14, I, I'll need to prep the drivers on it and then we'll be able to uh, start, you know, doing benchmarks and everything with it, so. All right. Uh, I'm trying to think if there's anything else. We should do a speaker test before we do any more benchmarks. Let's do a speaker test. 
I'm curious to see what these speakers sound like. I don't have high expectations right now on the speakers. I mean, let's be real. It's a budget system. It's $1,100. But if you can watch a Netflix in bed with it, that's the bonus. That's the icing on the cake, right? So these are downward firing speakers, which means it's unlikely to really, you know, give us any wow factor. But as long as it's loud enough to hear a TV show and I'll be happy. Um, or if you're in a quiet room, you want to play some music or listen to your video game, I'll be happy. But let's find out how loud they are. Again, not too high expectations at this price point. So let's find out. Okay, so I'm going to turn the fans off. I'm going to press FN and then the one key to do that. All right. All right, so um, at this point, the loudest fan in my room is the Razer Blade 18, which is interesting. So, all right. Let's back the camera up a little bit. We are at 100% volume, and I'm going to be holding this about 10 inches in front of the laptop, okay? So these are downward firing speakers, which means that uh, you would ideally want to be using this laptop uh, to watch stuff or to play stuff on a table so it can bounce off of the surface. Okay, here is Roar by Peter Spacey. Okay, that was not amazing. Uh, we're gonna do Half-Life by Faded Aeon. Oh. All right, that one actually didn't sound as bad as the first one. The first one was just like very bassy and it was all broken up. The second song uh, mainly focuses on like highs and mids. And since it's only two, two watt tweeters, basically, it sounds a lot better in music like that. Let's try uh, La La La, which has a lot of vocals. So here we go. Okay, so that was um, decent again in the mids and highs. The focus on that song is mainly on the mids and highs, and that's a bit, bit better. Overall, I would give it probably um, 4 out of 10 on the speaker side, maybe 3.5, 3.5 to 4 in that range. Not looking at amazing speakers. Um, that's what I would expect at this price point, though, right? You're paying, you pay for what you get when it comes to speaker quality. Typically, it's one of those premium things you have to pay a bit extra for if you want to have high quality speakers. Okay, so uh, let's. M sounds broken. No, that's how that's how they're supposed to sound. I'm pretty sure. <laughs> All right, so uh, let's start off with CS Go for our first game benchmark. Dun to dun. So we're gonna try to move through these uh, fairly quickly. And I'm, I, while we're doing this, I'm gonna try to compare uh, the benchmarks I also did on the MSI Katana that had the RTX 4070. So hopefully we'll be able to at least see some comparisons with like Cyberpunk 2077. Um, you know that we got a benchmark in that. We did, uh, I believe we did Hogwarts on the Katana and we did The Witcher 3, I believe. 
And I think we did God of War, but I don't I don't have God of War installed. But we'll, I think we also did Apex Legends. So we're going to do Apex Legends as well. So there'll be like three or four games we can compare um, performance with the RTX 4070. And we also are going to do Time Spy as well. So they're going to be able to um, see what we get with that. Yeah, Mars, I'm going to do Cyberpunk 1080p DLSS 3 and frame generation. Absolutely, that is going to be on the to-do list. And we'll try a couple different settings in Cyberpunk. I like, that's a great game to try doing with like no ray tracing, no DLSS, no frame generation. And then we'll also do DLSS on quality with ray tracing. And then we'll also do everything on. So that's a good one to do some quick tests and see what kind of performance we get. But most of these other games will just be running at 1080p ultra settings. Yeah. DLSS 3 is nice and would be good if more games get it, but the fact that you can't interact with the frames is annoying. Uh, yeah, I did a DLSS side-by-side -side comparison with frame generation. I would really encourage you guys to check out that video. I think it was very uh, enlightening. I did. I recorded, I recorded frame generation in slow motion with my slow motion camera at 240 frames per second slow motion at a 240 hertz display. And it lets us see exactly what kind of uh, look the frame ge the generated frames have. And it is so impressive when we were looking at the different frames, you could barely tell. You, I could not tell between the real frames and fake frames, except when certain artifacts popped up and then you were like, oh, I can see that's not generated properly. But uh, for the most part, like 99% of the frames had no problems that I could find. Um, at least in Hogwarts, Cyberpunk 2077, and in, uh, what was the third game I tested um, with frame gen? The Witcher 3. That one had some labeling issues. Uh, in general, frame generation is going to be fantastic for all types of games except esports games or anything competitive. You don't want to have in increased latency or delay with frame generation, and that's what it causes. Frame generation causes a delay, and you don't want that in competitive games. So frame generation is going to be amazing in single-player games. It's going to be amazing in casual games, casual multiplayer games, where you're not trying to compete necessarily. Like maybe it's a co-op game like WoW or uh, League of Le not League of Legends. You already get crazy frames in, in League of Legends. But, um, you know, games that are CPU-bound, they're casual games that are single-player games, it's going to be really, really great in those titles. Okay, so we're going to go to full screen. Everything is set on high. We're at 1080p right now. And we're going to turn on net graph 3 as well. And we need to turn on the fans to maximum anyway. Let me just go ahead and make sure we set that. Like RT has more issues than DLSS 3, comp and very high movement games. Uh, yeah, really high fast paced games may, all ca uh, may also cause problems with frame gen. Um, like I've heard Spider-Man 3, I have not tested Spider-Man 3, but I've heard because you're moving around huge build, big buildings, sometimes frame generation gets a little uh, buggy or wonky in that game. It looks like it appears that, th that we may have crashed right here. CSGO may have crashed when I changed from windowed to full screen. So I did update the drivers, but I noticed that the drivers for, I did notice that the drivers for um, these RTX 4000 or 4060 at least was at an older version than what the new 4080 and 4090 laptop drivers are at. So I'm not sure exactly what the best thing to do here is. I'm going to try to close CSGO and reopen it. Might have to go for a restart if I can't. I'll try signing out. It's probably the quickest way to get it to close down. Do we have time spy results yet? Not yet, Jose. We're going to do the game test first. All right.
Turn off. I'm going to have to turn Max Fans back on. So I do all my testings with Max Fans enabled. Um, just so you, anyone that's first time watching this has context. Uh, that way, all laptops have a fair chance at getting, you know, cooling their their stuff properly, uh, their components properly. But uh, some laptops will be able to have better temperatures with less overall fan noise than others. I did notice that in the software, you could also set up uh, like a manual fan level. So if you wanted to, uh, if you wanted to like say reduce your power limits on your CPU to like 50 or 40 or 30 or something, and then you reduce the fan noise down to only like say 70% is the maximum it can go to or something. You should be able to tune the fan noise of this laptop to be whatever you want it to be. Can you do a slow-mo capture of a fast-paced competitive game to show the artificial frames? So uh, Bomaru 24, the biggest issue with frame generation is not, it's not that it's, um, so we are in full screen now, that's good. The biggest issue is not that the frames will look bad in competitive games, it's actually, like the frames will look good. The problem is the frames will be delayed because the way frame generation works the real frame is rendered and then an artificial frame is inserted. And because it's inserted, it basically delays the next real frame. So it essentially adds an inherent latency into the video, which is a small, like a 20% increase to latency if you already have good latency is not a big deal. But if you're struggling to have good latency in some game or application, like you want to have the lowest possible latency, like in an esports title, you don't want to be dealing with that. You know, you want to have the fastest possible latency no matter what. Okay, so right now on high settings, 1080p, we're doing 300 to 400 FPS. Let's see what we get in the benchmark. Let me go ahead and zoom in for you guys. So right now we're doing 300. Obviously this is gonna be able to play CSGO above 144 frames per second pretty easily. But CSGO is fairly easy to run, it's an older game, so. I wonder how powerful a 35 watt 4070 will be. That's interesting, Sonic. It's gonna, it's, it's probably not gonna be awful, given the new Ada architecture, but it's still not gonna be ideal, I don't think, you know. Um, so, yeah. But I mean, if you're talking about like, say, the forty, I think there's a forty-five watt, forty sixty in the Arrow fourteen, um, or like in the Cyborg fifteen, or uh, the GF sixty. Three has a 45 watt. I'm not sure which laptop has a 35 watt 4070. I haven't heard of a laptop with that low of a wattage. I don't know. Um, for tablets, yeah, for tablets, that would be a very high level of performance for sure. So um, it looks like we're doing close to 300 FPS. Let's see the results here just in just a moment. So we got 262 FPS at 1080p high settings in CSGO. Pretty nice. Um, all right, so let's hop into Cyberpunk 2077. Is a 4060 laptop more powerful than a 3070 laptop? Uh, Yanis, in general, probably not. 
Uh, we haven't, I have not tested a 3060 with a high TDP, but uh, for example, if a 3070 is a very low TDP, let's say the 3070 is at 75 watts as well, which is not a good TDP for a 3070. Um, this 4060 at 75 watts is going to uh, do, I think, actually pretty well in a side-by-side -side comparison. It may not beat it, but it'd probably be fairly close in terms of raw rasterization because the ADA architecture is so much more power efficient, so it would help. I'm guessing the 3070 would still win, maybe? I don't know. I mean, that's a very interesting idea, but... The, when you factor in frame generation games, the 30, the 4060 would definitely win in frame generation titles because the 30, 3070 just doesn't have frame gen. Um, I know that a 3070, 75 watt, what does that get in time spy? Probably like eight or 9,000. I'm pretty sure this is going to get about eight or 9,000 um, in time spy as well. So it's, it's going to be interesting to see. Uh, that would be a that would be a close comparison, I think. Um, okay, so we're gonna try everything on maximum to start with. We're gonna do frame generation enabled. We're gonna do everything on quality. I don't know if this is gonna work. So everything is ma <laughs> everything is maxed. Um, full screen 1080p. Oh, you know what? We don't have, we don't have our GPU temperature. We need to pull that up. We'll have to use the HW info to get that to display. For some reason, Afterburner did not have that available to us. So we want to have our GPU temps. A thirty. What it, what does a thirty seventy seventy five watt get? Does it? Which, which which laptop had a 3070-75 watt? Anyone know? Let me know what time spy score for that is. I'm very curious. Um, okay, so here we are. We need to go into our GPU, and we need to get our temperature here. And we want to turn this on. Okay, so here's our GPU temperature at the bottom. It's 63 right now, 64. All right, so let's go ahead and run Benchmark. Here we go. I'm going to try to find a, a Benchmark while this is running. For a 3070-75 watt. Which, which laptop would have this? Like a Katana maybe? GF66. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, let me just do a quick evaluation. So we are, we are hitting our 75 watt target right now in our C, uh, GPU. Our CPU is doing 47 watts which is pretty good. Our temps on the CPU are in the high 80s and our, I guess, bouncing around low 90s and then the 80s. And then our GPU temps are 78 degrees, which is all right. It's not ideal. I'd prefer the, the, I'd prefer the GPU temp to be a little bit lower than that, like in the low 70s or high 60s. But... Still, our average FPS was 85, okay? What did the Katana get? Let me look up the result in this exact same test on the Katana. All right, let me, I'll, I'll pull this up and I will uh, show you guys. 11 nits brightness. On the screen here, hold on. So we're gonna do here, we're gonna go here, we're gonna go over to my Katana test. So if you didn't see this already, I did a, a, a Katana test and uh, we did a number of benchmarks on this. Uh, Cyberpunk 1080p, 
Everything is enabled on ultra settings. This is the right one right here. Okay, so we're Let's see what we got. With this. So we got 109. So 85 FPS here versus 109. That's a 15, 14 plus 10. So 24 more FPS to get uh, with the 4070. Okay. And that's with an 85 watt 4070. Interesting result, huh? Um, so that's 24 more FPS is how much more performance at 86? About a 27% performance gain, somewhere in that range. Let me, let, me, let me calculate it. So it'd be 24 divided by 86. Yeah, 27.9 FPS gain going to the 4070, at least in Cyberpunk. Um, but, I mean, you got to admit, 80, 87 FPS is extremely playable, and we only have 8 gigs of DDR4 3200 megahertz RAM in this. If with, a, with another 8 gigs, I'm curious if we would see some additional gains in performance. Okay, so we're turning off frame generation. We're going to turn off DLSS. And we're going to turn off ray tracing, okay? So everything's on ultra now. All ultra settings, but no extra NVIDIA features. Let's see what we get now. Do do. The 4070 was way colder. Yeah, it was. That that katana cooled that laptop so well. Like the cooling in that was phenomenal. I'm, I'll start the average. It's not the average didn't start from the beginning, but um, still. So no DLSS, native 1080p. We're getting some good frames here. 60. It's very playable. So is it worth going for a 4070 instead of a 3070 laptop? Um, a 30, it all comes down to price versus performance, okay? That's the key thing to keep in mind. Um, and the other key thing is that the RTX 4000 series has frame generation, the RTX 3000 series does not. Now, in terms of raw rasterization performance, the 4070 and 3070 are in a very similar ballpark. It's not a huge gap there. Um, oh, we're getting stuttering. I wonder what's causing our stuttering right now. Our, our GPU wattage is dropping. Our CPU wattage, did we get unplugged or something? We are still plugged in. What's causing the stuttering? Oh, snap. I wonder what was causing that to stutter right there. Interesting. Could be a driver issue. It could be a BIOS issue. Um, there's a few different things that could be there. So uh, the primary thing to keep in mind is when you're comparing the RTX 4000 series, NVIDIA bumped all of the different numbers up by 10. So an RTX 4090 is compared against the 3080. The RTX 4080 should be compared against the 3070. The RTX 4070 is the third best GPU should be compared against the 3070, at least in terms of pricing. Uh, so that means we should expect manufacturers to price the 4070 closer to what the 3060 pricing was too. So don't pay exorbitant prices for the 4070. Some manufacturers are pricing it too high. Okay. Um, so don't overpay. It's very important not to overpay. Now let's just see what we get if we, Turn everything on low, all right? We're gonna turn everything on low with frame generation on quality. I'm curious what we get. Everything's on low except textures. Let's see, this is just a fun experiment. So this is basically seeing what kind of, uh, can we hit 144 frames per second with the 4060 in Cyberpunk? That's basically what I'm testing here. Um,
<laughs> Mr. Alexander says, stuttering is from the small memory bus. Uh, we don't know exactly what was causing that stuttering. It looks like we might still be getting that stuttering to happen. Yeah, we are. Looks like we're going to need to restart something. Um, oh, it says we're in, in battery only mode right now. Huh. Let me try it. Yeah, it's acting like as if it's in battery only mode. Let me try unplugging and replugging our. Okay. So we are now plugged in again. So that was what it, the charger had turned off for some reason. I don't know why it turned off, but that's what happened. The charger was disconnected or something was going on there with the charger. So we'll have to redo that other test we did as well. But look at that. We're doing over 144 frames per second right now in Cyberpunk, at least for a little bit. Okay, so let's try that. Let's try that again. We gotta run that, we gotta run that back. Might wait till next year to see if it's still worth it. Uh, you can always wait. If you're happy with your gaming laptop experience, you can always wait. And, and I'm not saying the RTX 3000 series are a bad option. I think they, they definitely can be a very good option. If you can get the right priced RTX 3000 series laptop, fantastic. If you, uh, that said, if you're primarily play single player games, frame gen, I think, is, is going to be the future, I think. And it'd be hard for me not to like recommend getting a GPU that can do frame gen. I think it's gonna be a very big feature going into future games. So the same way DLSS has been implemented in hundreds of titles now, I think frame gen will be implemented in hundreds of titles uh, within a couple of years. So yeah, I think, I think frame gen is gonna be huge for single player gaming. Did you see that DLSS 3 was unlocked on the 20 and 30 series cards? Cyberpunk was first. Interesting. No, I have not. I'd be very curious to check that out. Um, <laughs> and I'm curious to see if the gains are the same. Because NVIDIA claimed that something was different about the ADA architecture, that they couldn't do it with the RTX 2000 or 3000 series. Um, and so that's why they only offered it with the 4000 series. So I'm, I'm curious to see that. Email me a link to that. Um, Frame gen will be, if we can get it in more games, it doesn't come, but if it doesn't come for ages, it'll be an issue. So uh, NVIDIA's already got it in 35 different games. Um, it's like confirmed to be in 35 different games, I believe soon. It's like actually working, I think in like 18 games or something. Uh, it's in like the teens now, but uh, 35 games have already agreed to do it, implement it. So I would expect it to... Uh, I would expect it to be available in many more games eventually here. So overall, look at that. We're averaging 144. Well, it didn't start updating the average now. I don't know. We'll see what we averaged. But it's close to the free screen refresh rate here when we play Cyberpunk on low. 164 FPS on average in Cyberpunk on low with an RTX 4060. I mean, let's see what we get now with our uh, our other settings, which was ultra, no ray tracing, no DLSS, and no frame gen. We're going to rerun that benchmark because that was invalid. How is the GPU hotspot temperature? Um, so GPU hotspot temperature is currently not on the, the list, but it is at 88 right now. I think it's not updating. It doesn't look like the sensor is updating. It looks like it's just staying the exact same. Okay, there it goes to 86. The GPU hotspot uh, temperature can go above 87. The core temp is the one that needs to stay below 87, uh, if I am remembering correctly. Okay, so we're going to set everything to ultra again. All right, and then we're going to turn off DLSS. 
We're going to turn off frame generation. We're going to turn off ray tracing. So this is going to be raw rasterization, okay? 1080p raw rasterization. What do we get in Cyberpunk? Let's find out. The GPU memory was hottest at 96. Oh, I didn't see that. But um, I believe the GPU memory can go up to 110 if I am remembering correctly before taking damage. That's still pretty, it's pretty spicy temperature. Um, okay, here we are. Cyberpunk on all ultra settings, no DLSS, no ray tracing, no frame gen. We're doing 60 FPS with 41 for our 1% lows. Pretty nice. Does the CPU pull 100 plus watts? Uh, so in Cinebench R23, Ky uh, Cairo Zokun, uh, we were doing, I think, around 80 watts, and then it throttled down to about 75 watts with very high CPU temperatures. We were thermal throttling. So not ideal in that sense, um, but you could obviously use something like Intel XTU to lower the power limit by like five to 10 watts, and you could get nice controlled CPU temps and still have very good performance. And we did about, uh, I think, 13,700 in Cinebench R23 for a 10 minute test, which is pretty dang good overall for multi-core overall performance. So, okay, so beautiful. We did 63.56, 63.56. Um, We're obviously running very high temps in this machine. You could tame them down with your own power limits. Um, and you could also get a laptop cooler to help keep these temperatures in check a bit better. Um, and obviously, repasting the CPU and GPU in this machine would also probably help a lot. So that's the that would probably be the number one thing I would do for this this laptop. All right, so we did all low settings, got over 144 FPS. We did all ultra settings, got 60 something FPS. We did DLS with frame gen on all ultra settings with ray tracing. We got 86 FPS. That's all very playable at 1080p resolution. Let's run into Dying Light 2 and see what we get. My 2070 laptop with an overclock pulls 59 FPS and it's four years old. Uh, which In which setting, Niebuhr? You had to clarify which which setting, so. Uh, so I show face says, does this card perform good at 2K resolution? 1080p is too little for me. So I show face, if you're gonna use an external monitor, you'd probably wanna use a mini display port. And I think you'd probably be able to do QHD gaming. Um, as long as you're willing to down some settings below ultra, probably looking at medium to high settings in a lot of games and then you're gonna be able to do QHD gaming. If you want to run all ultra settings, um, I'm thinking you're gonna want either a higher watt 4060 or go up to a 4070. And obviously if you want extremely high frame rate in QHD, then you're probably, like if you want 100 plus FPS on ultra settings, then you're gonna to wanna to go with a 4080 or higher um, for QHD. So here we are, we've got DLSS on quality. Frame generation is enabled. I want to make sure we're on all ultra settings. We're, so we're on high quality ray tracing default with DLS on quality and frame generation enabled. This is how we're gonna test this. This is all looking good. Let's go ahead and find out what we do. Um, Mario says, do you know if Razer replaces laptops because of backlight bleed? Um, well, you can all, so if you're worried about backlight bleed, the number one thing you can do is buy your Razer laptop from a retailer like Best Buy. Because if you're unsatisfied with the laptop in any way, you can just return that sucker. They have a great return policy. So if it ends up having terrible backlight bleed, you just return it. So that's, that's my advice. If you're worried about backlight bleed, that's the, re that's the route to go. Um, I mean, that's the brutal truth. Like, 
If you wanted to return the Razer laptop to Razer, you could do it. Uh, that was a pretty big stutter we just saw, by the way. Interesting, interesting stutter. Um, so our, we're getting generally really smooth frame rates, but occasional dips there with like some stutters. I'm curious what's causing that. That may be our memory. You know, we've got a lot of different scenes being jumped between in this. And, um, you know, we only have eight gigs of DDR4, 3200 megahertz memory. And I'm guessing we're definitely maxing that out in a game like Dying Light 2, but we're still getting great frames. But I'm guessing as you move between areas, you may end up, you know, maxing out that memory. How much TDP is the GPU? We are doing 75 watts right here. You can see the TDP on the GPU. Um, so, and it's pulling 75 watts pretty much nonstop. No boost, no dropping. Um, we're hitting nice, consistent, like 45 watts on the, the CPU. And we're hitting a high percentage of utilization on the GPU. Uh, well, we're, we're hitting at least full TDP power limits and high levels of clock speed. Um, our, our GPU temps are in the low 80s, which is okay. It's not ideal though, right? Ideally, I think you want uh, below 80, like in the lower 70s, but uh, it, it's not terrible being in, the, in this 80 degree temperature. You're not thermal throttling on that GPU. Thermal throttling would be 87. So we ended up with 89 FPS, okay? 89 FPS with frame generation. Um, this, this result doesn't, it doesn't count the fra uh, generated frames properly. So 89 FPS right here. And uh, we had our 2% lows, uh, 2 FPS for our lows, because we had some pretty big stutters there. But our min FPS was 26, which is not going to be quite as picky as our 1% lows. So in general, this is going to be when it's not hard stuttering, at least. We're doing 26. So um, very, very playable on ultra settings. Dying Light 2, great game. I really enjoyed playing it. I haven't, I need to continue playing it, but I'm playing my, I'm playing through Hogwarts right now. Um, Hogwarts, I'm like 40 hours into it now. I've got a gear score over 700 between my offense and defense gear score. I'm just like killing everything on hard mode in like two hits now. It is awesome. Um, I need to keep, I need to keep playing through the storyline. Okay, uh, next up, let's do Hogwarts. Yeah. So uh, Hogwarts is going to be interesting because we only have 8 gigs of RAM in this, in this system, and Hogwarts will use all 16 gigs in a laptop. On my Razer Blade 18 and QHD, at least, we're pulling 24 gigs of RAM usage, and we only have 8 gigs of system RAM in this laptop. So, I mean, we're talking about, like, less than a third of what the game ideally uses when it can use it all. So what kind of frame rate perspective? And I'm curious if we're gonna run into horrible stutters with this. I don't know, we'll see. Interesting. Okay, it took a little bit to load in there. Uh, I got a nice new outfit. I don't know if you see the outfit. It's very fancy schmancy. All right, so Hogwarts, we're going to do uncapped. We've got frame generation. We've got DLSS on quality, which means we're rendering at basically 720p resolution. Recommended is low, but screw that. We're going to ultra. Except for our textures, we're going to set to low. Um, and we want ray tracing on, because why not, right? Screw it. Well, we got a new laptop. Let's get, let's set everything on ultra, except, <laughs> except for, uh, so everything's on ultra except textures on low. All right. This is the way I've been testing. The, this is the way I tested the Katana and it still played pretty dang good, I believe, but we'll see what this gets. It's interesting that it recommended everything on low. I don't think we even need to go low though. That's the interesting part to me. Um, let's see. I need to exit game. Okay. So we have to restart to be able to enable ray tracing. So... Yeah, only eight gigs of RAM. Yeah, that's not usually enough for most games. Um, in general, I recommend 32 gigs of RAM if you can get it. Um, and uh, 
I went over the exact RAM stick during the unboxing. We took the bottom of this laptop off. I went over, it's a, it's a crucial eight gig stick, DDR4-3200. So if you wanna get a matching stick, feel free. Um, and you can just upgrade this to 16 and you'll be, you'll be good to go in the vast majority of games. Uh, but certain games like Hogwarts, Star Citizen, we're starting to see them want 32 gigs of RAM. Um, this has eight gigs of VRAM, I believe in the 4060, but VRAM is different. System RAM is, uh, depends on what you're doing, basically, whether you need the system RAM or not. So everything's on ultra ray tracing. Wait, we want everything on ultra. Yeah. We want ray tracing on ultra too. We want everything on ultra. Get out of here. All right. Shabalagoo, let's go. Is 12 gig of VRAM enough for 4K? Not recommended I, by me. I would say you want at least 16 for 4K, ideally. Um, if you're gonna go with 12 gigs of VRAM, be ready to turn the textures down in some games. That's for sure. Um, even with 16 on the 4090, we had to turn textures down in Hogwarts with the GT77. It, tr it, tr it instantly maxed all 16 gigs of VRAM in that. All right, so. Um, I got some nice, some nice fancy digs here. Uh, let's, <laughs> I'm curious if we're going to be able to play this game at all. I mean, we are playing it. Interesting. Okay. So I just reset it. Let's see. Now that I've looked around a little bit, let's see what our 1% low is going to be like. Again, every single thing is on ultra right now with this, with this game. And we're doing 93 FPS in Hogwarts. All right, let's go to um, let's go to the Forbidden Forest. We'll teleport over to the Forbidden Forest. We'll run through the forest a little bit, see what that's like, because the Forbidden Forest is going to be not quite as demanding, not as many NPCs. And then we'll head over to Hogsmeade to do our benchmark, because that's like the most demanding area of the game, I believe, because there's like 30 NPCs in like one area, one street. Okay, so we're definitely getting some stutters as the game loads in. That's expected when we only have eight gigs of RAM, all right? Oh man, we want 16 gigs of RAM. If you, uh, unless you're okay with some stutters as the game loads in, I personally would not love that. I would definitely want no stutters, <laughs> personally, me, me personally. So um, definitely would recommend getting up to 16 gigs of RAM. Pretty sure that would fix the stuttering that's going on here. Okay. We could try everything on low settings too, just to give you an idea of what the upper end and lower end's like. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and reset this. So this is a new FPS counter. So again, everything's on maximum. We're on ultra with ray tracing on ultra too. So, I mean, it's impressive that at $1,100 laptops doing at least averaging over 60 FPS. I think that is an impressive feat in and of itself, okay? That said, we definitely still need more RAM. <laughs> um, yeah. Oh, yeah. Meant the timing's latency. Let's see if we can fight something. I mean, you could play. I mean, as someone who's more casual, less picky, you could still play this game. I mean, it's not like it's an unplayable experience. It's just you got to be ready to deal with some stuttering, right? Like, it, it is far from the ideal play experience. And I would highly recommend getting upgraded RAM for sure in this laptop. If you're going to play complex new titles on ultra settings, I would say 16 gigs of RAM is the minimum you'd want. Try running into the water. It has the worst drops. I just teleported it away. Sorry. Uh, wow. Fans are going to fly. So fans are running already at max. We already have the fan set at max. Um, we are seeing some very high CPU temps 
95. We saw 100 for a moment there. It's safe for the CPU to the best of my knowledge, uh, but it indicates that I would highly recommend a repaste job on this laptop as well. So if you, the ideal setup for this laptop, if you were to take this from the stock configuration to like a proper setup, you'd, you'd want to take the bottom off. You'd want to upgrade the RAM. You probably want to upgrade the SSD to be a little bigger, but you don't necessarily have to do that. Uh, and then you'd probably also want to repaste the CPU and GPU with something better. Cause I'm guessing we're going to get better temps um, in this machine if you had a repaste job. All right. Any updates about the Acer Predator 18? It's still not for sale in the United States as far as I know, but as soon as it is, I'm going to order one so I can test it. Um, I think the 16, actually, I don't think, yeah, no, the 16 wasn't, it was almost for sale, but then it turned out to be an incorrect listing. Okay, all right, so here we are. We're at Hogsmeade. Um, we're going to go ahead and do our run through. I usually, I, I usually kind of, let me just run up here real quick. I try to run through this area at least once ahead of time, just so the VRAM has a chance to grab all the textures. It's something I've been doing with the other laptops, so I might as well do it with this laptop because it'll definitely appreciate the help. Um, yeah, people, people are crying about the 4070 sucking because they're comparing it against the 3070 Ti, which was the second best GPU from last generation. And the 4070 is the third best GPU in this generation. It's not really an apples to apples comparison, in my opinion. Like it's priced, the 4070 is priced below what the 3070 Ti was priced at. Like at, at launch, the 3070 Ti was a more expensive GPU than what the 4070 GPU is priced at. So they're, bo they're both 70 series cards though. That's the thing. That's the, that's the thing that I can't get past. They're both 4070 cards and you would expect a increase in performance generation on gen. And that's the tricky part. And it's, that's part, that's the part that's going to confuse people and make people mad. Uh, if they upgrade their GPU to a 4070 and then wait, it's not any faster. What? And in whatever game they play. So, um, and I can understand that. I can understand being upset about that. So, all right, so here we go. We can tell that this is a very CPU-centered uh, portion of the game because look at our CPU wattage doing 45 right now. Our GPU wattage, we're not hitting 100% GPU utilization that we can't see it. Um, we're definitely not because we're only hitting 60-something watts, 58 watts there. So, um, all right, so the most demanding section of the game. Let's see what we get running up. Hogsmeade here. Definitely have quite a few stutters as things load in. 68 FPS and 12 on our 1% lows. That's not very good for our 1% lows. Again, we really, I think, want to utilize uh, 16 gigs of DDR4 3200 memory at least, okay? Maybe even 32 gigs. Um, if you have the money, I would spring for 32 gigs. But um, I think that is probably the source of our stutters is most likely that. Maybe even these CPU temps could be causing some of the stutters as well if, it, if we're hitting thermal throttling. So laptop cooler, CPU repaste, those are potential options to help fix those issues. On this laptop, I wish it was better stock though. Like, you know, if you're just gonna buy this stock uh, and never change anything about it, it's it becomes harder to recommend this laptop for games like Hogwarts because this experience is not unplayable if you're not picky, but most people don't wanna deal with stuttering, right? So that becomes unplayable for most people, I think, when you have stuttering like this. So, um, yeah. There's your Hogwarts experience. Let's try to go fight something. Um, what can I fight? Pretty sure I can go into Forbidden Forest and slap some dark wizards around. Easy World Rob says, $1,100 for a 4060 is a very bad deal. I would disagree. In terms of GPU performance, 
This thing crushes what a 3050 Ti did at launch. Um, so in terms of raw GPU performance, it's I think it's a very good deal. I just think that the downside of this machine right now is primarily focused around the display quality and the fact that uh, we are only have eight gigs of DDR4, 3200 gigs RAM. That's, I mean, and then obviously this biggest strength to this laptop versus 3000 series is that this has frame gen and that that one does not. Um, and for anyone that was curious about frame gen performance versus no frame gen performance, let's try turning off frame gen for a moment and you'll be able to see the level of performance, okay? So disabling frame gen. All right, so we were doing 60 something before and now we're doing 40, low 40s, 35, 37, 34. It, adding frame gen in will take a gaming experience that this, this is barely playable maybe. Um, only eight FPS for our 1% lows. And when we add frame gen back, it, it bumps us up to like 60 something. And those are frames that you can see. And it's very, very few artifacts. It adds a slight latency delay and boom. Like I'm sure you guys can even see this. So I managed to kill that wizard. Yeah, and, and, and if, even if you disagree with me, that's fine. I think, um, I think disagreeing with someone is is totally fine to me. Like sometimes things are going to be worth it for some people and not for others, just because of uh, past experiences that they've had. Right? Maybe you've had a bad experience buying a low end budget laptop, and you're like, I'm never going to buy a budget laptop again in my life. Um, or maybe you had a bad experience buying an expensive laptop that lost value, and you're like, I'm never going to buy an expensive laptop again in my life. So I totally, I totally get the argument either way. Um, but in terms of value, I think a 4060 is going to outperform a 3060 um, on average, especially at the same wattage level. I mean, this, so this laptop weighs only 4.2 pounds. So that's the other thing to keep in mind. I did look up the laptop weight. It's an extremely light laptop. Um, I would like to test this on low settings if we can with ray tracing off just to see what we get for frame rate range. So to do that, we're gonna have to restart the game. And we'll still keep DLSS on quality with frame generation on. One percent lows are bad. Yeah, I agree the one percent lows are bad. Is an RTX 2070 with eight gigs of VRAM any good for gaming? Yeah, that'll play games pretty well. Just gotta, just gotta get it at the right price. That's always that's always my thing when you're comparing RTX 2000, 3000, 4000. You gotta you gotta find something at the right price for the value. And I think I think this laptop is positioned well in that sense. Like it's it should be positioned well to hit good levels of value for the money. Um, but out of the box, the out of box experience is compromised by lower RAM and by mediocre thermals. So, okay, so here we are on low. We're hitting over 100 FPS now. This gameplay experience is noticeably better. Oh man, I'm gonna die again. Our 1% lows are still not that good. I believe that's because of our, uh, because of the VRAM, all right? Or sorry, not because of the VRAM, but because of the, uh, the only eight gigs of RAM. So once again, not an ideal playing experience, really not. I think these stutters are definitely causing issues for input lag. I would say it's not even that playable um, in combat. 
Uh, so eight gigs of DDR4 3200. I got. I got. I'm gonna. I'm gonna change my my mind on this one. I don't think you really want to play a game like Hogwarts with only eight gigs of DDR4 3200. That's where I'm at now on that. Um, for at least that game, the gameplay experience is not good. So, yeah, that's what I'm gonna say. Um, is OLED better than Mini LED? Yes, I would say so. How much VRAM is the legacy use, Hogwarts Legacy using? So it uses a variety of VRAM. Um, if you set it to ultra textures, it wants to use at least uh, more than eight gigs of VRAM at 1080p. So it's not good. Uh, if you set it to... Um, if you set it to... Uh, low settings, then it uses like five or six gigs of VRAM. So it just depends, at, at least at 1080p, maybe even a little less than that. OLED is great for response time and contrast ratio. Mini LEDs for bright color. Uh, I, think, I think that Mini LED is pretty competitive with OLED in a lot of ways, but um, the biggest area where Mini LED is more competitive is, is the pricing and Ma being able to mass produce it, I believe, at a reasonable price. So it's going to be a lot easier to get a mini LED display than it is going to be to get a uh, OLED display, especially since there's not as many OLEDs that are high refresh rate being produced. So Forty sixty and forty seventy only makes sense on creator laptops. I would disagree. I think I think forty sixty and forty seventy are still a very competitive GPU when priced correctly. That's the key. It just all comes down to pricing. Like they're better, I think, than a, a thirty sixty and a thirty seventy at the same TDP level, even without frame gen. A thirty seventy Ti is, I think, a little better or very equal in terms of. Uh, raw rasterization performance. It looks like our our power brick is our power brick maybe overheating. Is that what is causing? I mean, it's kind of right behind the exhaust system. So, I mean, I'm guessing the power brick is just overheating, and so um, don't put the power brick. It, right behind the exhaust. I'm gonna try putting it on the floor instead. Ha! The problem has occurred with your display driver, but I'm guessing, I'm guessing that uh, me unplugging the power brick and plugging it back in is probably what caused the issue there to cause it to crash. But uh, is this a matte or glossy display? It is a matte display, I believe. PC is free, but the barrier to entry is way higher. Looking at the cost of the GPUs. Yeah, it's it's pretty interesting, huh? So unplugging and replugging in this sucker, I think, has caused an issue here. We're going for a restart here. The blue screen of death. We did encounter it, yes. So, um, based on my initial experience here with this power adapter, it feels like this might be a power adapter issue, okay? So, ideally, even if the laptop exhaust is pointed right at the power adapter, you don't want the power adapter to be overheating. That's not a good sign. So, I'm curious if we're gonna run into this issue at all if the power adapter is on the floor. Now, the power adapter is plugged in. And yet, we're still not getting any power to the laptop. Let me try unplugging it and plugging it back in, see? Now we're plugged in. Isn't that interesting? This, this might be a fatal flaw for the laptop if, I guess fatal flaw being 
a deal breaker for me to be able to recommend it. If the laptop power brick cannot keep the laptop power, that's no good. People would have to buy an extra power adapter to go with it. That's not good. So need to keep doing some tests on this to verify, but let's see if we run into any more issues now that the power adapter is on the floor and it's not in the exhaust, the fan exhaust. I mean, that I can kind of understand if it, if it doesn't work because it's in the fan exhaust, that's not a deal breaker. You just got to not put it in the fan exhaust. But now that it's on the floor, let's see if we end up in running into any overheating issues. So Tomb Raider, here we go. Do you like Jay's two cents and point a heat gun at the power brick? What? <laughs> uh, use a cooling pad for the power brick. LOL. <laughs> you guys are hilarious. That's funny. How did the ZenBook 14 Pro 120 Hertz OLED 470 look in person? I did not look at it. I did not look at it. I did not focus on the ZenBooks while I was there. I did look at some of the other um, laptops, though, like the Studio Artbook 240 Hertz OLED with 3D. That was awesome. That was an incredible uh, display. Wildfire, I do not have Sons of Forest. I need to focus my benchmarks around games that are uh, popular or regularly benchmarked so people can have good comparison numbers. Um, we want to make sure Afterburner is running. want to make sure to pause that. All of that's looking good. Looks good, looks good. So we're running Shadow of the Tomb Raider at maximum possible settings. All right. Can we do it with eight gigs of DDR4, 3200 megahertz RAM? Maybe not. Um, and also this is probably, you know, having low RAM speeds is probably going to negatively affect our overall frames in a game like Shadow of the Tomb Raider because it's a memory sensitive game that's sensitive to latency um, and overall memory speed. That said, with ray tracing on Ultra, we're doing over a hundred FPS right now, like what? That's pretty good. Is a 3060 8 gig good for 3D animation? I mean, I'm sure it would work for basic 3D animation, but yeah. We're using a lot of VRAM right now. We're doing 7.1 gigs on our VRAM. Averaging 90 frames, though, on all Ultra and Shadow of the Tomb Raider, that's some fucking good frame. I just, <laughs> this is the first time I've sworn on the live streams after all this time. Dang. Uh, no one heard that. No one heard that. All right. Family-friendly content. Family-friendly content. <laughs> okay. So, um, <laughs> our overall combined TDP appears to be about 115 watts. Um, our average FPS so far has been 86. Pretty good. Let it out. <laughs> so, so in terms of like, you know, the funny thing is, okay, uh, the previous generation, like last year, one year ago, you look for a gaming laptop at $1,100. You're either going to be buying an RTX 3050, 3050 Ti, or maybe an RTX 3060. Those are, those are going to be your options, okay? This laptop, in terms of raw GPU performance, crushes those three options like, like, like dramatically. If you want to play on everything on Ultra. Ray tracing enabled, all of that, okay? The thing is, you need 16 gigs of good memory if you want to be able to play without stuttering, at least in certain titles like Hogwarts, for sure. I'm actually tempted to like 
try to fix this laptop? Like, what if I did like a tutorial on how to fix this machine and make it awesome? Um, like I buy the extra eight gig stick and then repaste this CPU and then redo all these benchmarks and see the performance difference. I'm thinking the performance difference would be pretty noticeably big um, in, in terms of FPS gains. Family friendly content lulls. Come on, man. Family friendly content. <laughs> uh, yeah. I don't see the game's bright memory ray tracing. May I ask why no use it? Uh, everything should be enabled, including ray tracing. Shadow quality is on ray tracing on ultra. Okay, so we got 85 frames per second. What did the katana get? I think I tested this with the katana. Did I test this with the katana? Let's find out. Um, I did not test this with the katana. Okay, well, I might have to test this with the katana and find out because um, that's interesting. Eighty five FPS I feel like is a very good result for ten eighty P Ultra with ray tracing enabled. I mean it's obviously gonna be a very very playable game at that point. Um as long as the one percent lows are not crazy. Let's check out the Witcher three performance. The new Dell XPS can be configured up to an RTX 4080. Interesting. I, I, I'd be curious to see what that, how that performs. Do, do, do. Okay, so uh, we're going to do ray tracing on ultra. DLS on quality. Okay. This would probably be how I would ideally want to play this game if we can. DLS frame generation on 1080p enabled. Let's see what we get. Only a 60 hertz display though. This has a 144 hertz display, TCAM. Oh, the Dell XPS only has a 60 hertz display. Oh, goodness no. Yeah, no, if you're gonna spend thousands of dollars on a gaming laptop, you want at least a 120 hertz minimum. Jeez. All right, so uh, usually Witcher has a lot of loading in issues. So we're going to run around, get everything in the, get all the textures loaded in. All right. And so this is going to be the Witcher, everything on ultra with DLSS on quality and frame gen. We'll turn those off uh, and do another run at 1080p. All right. So we're almost prepped to the right spot. Okay, here we go. So we're doing 60 FPS almost on the dot. This game is gonna be very playable, even with only eight gigs of, of RAM. So that's so interesting. 
Certain games just chug like Hogwarts with only eight gigs of RAM, and other games are freaking just doing awesome. So it really depends on the game in terms of how much RAM you need for a smooth gaming experience. 69 FPS. 69.39. I'm very impressed with that. Uh, Yeah, only 8 gigs of RAM in 2023 is LOL kick. Yeah, I agree it is. But we're seeing what it does today. We're seeing how playable is, what games are playable, what games are not playable. Um, you know, we're going to try to get a better idea. All right, so we're going to do this again. And this time we're going to turn off DLSS, ray tracing, and frame gen. And just do raw 1080p Witcher on ultra settings. So ray tracing off, DLSS off. All right, and no frame generation either, off. Okay, beautiful. All right, so here we go. It looks to me, I just want to make sure we don't have anything else that popped on because it looks like something else may have. When we turned off DLSS, though, there's no ray tracing. Dynamic scaling, we don't want dynamic scaling. I was going to say, things don't look sharp and crisp, so. All right, no dynamic scaling there. That looks better. That looks more like native resolution. All right. Here we go. So still 59 FPS, 56 FPS. Interesting. Still very playable with everything on Ultra and no DLSS. No DLSS, no frame gen. If you were to flip on DLSS and frame gen with no ray tracing, then you'd be pushing like Probably like over 90, maybe even 100 FPS. So I can try flipping those on and see what they do. Uh, we won't do a whole benchmark run, but 6348 for Witcher on Ultra. Um, very impressive. I mean, you were to run this same benchmark with a 3050 Ti, good luck. Um, you're not going to be getting this level of performance, I don't think. Um, at least not a 75 watt one for sure, I think. All right, so let's try flipping on DLSS to quality. And we'll flip on frame gen, but no ray tracing. I gotta say the image quality looks much sharper now. Um, wow, we're doing 121 FPS now. So if you wanted a high resolution, super frame, uh, super high frame rate experience on this laptop it is certainly possible to do that. Uh, we're sliding into like, it's, it's making us go into map view because we were running outside of the top of the map. Um, so with this $1,100 laptop, we're doing 120 frames per second. I feel like if you're willing to tune your laptop, you're probably going to be able to get good frames in this, uh, in a lot of games with this RTX 4060. Like you might not be able to run on a maximum, maximum settings at 1080p all the time, which I don't think that for $1,100, I wouldn't expect you to be able to. That's the thing. Like in the past, you would never have been able to do that. Um, you know, with games like The Witcher 3 with the 30, 3050 Ti, it's going to be playable, but not on ultra settings, uh, most likely. So, yeah, it's interesting. Okay, so we have Apex Legends, and then we're going to run Time Spy. Okay. <sighs> 
I tried Flight Simulator with Zephyrus M16, and I couldn't tell if the noise was my laptop taking off or the airplanes. LOL. That's kind of funny, kind of true, probably, depending on what airplane's flying. How long is the battery life on this? It's only a 54 watt hour battery, so I would not expect super great battery life. Um, probably between three hours unoptimized, maybe two and a half hours unoptimized, up to like five hours um, with everything optimized. Uh, being like, you know, like office tasks, stuff like that, you could probably get up to like five hours in that, in that range. Are you into handheld PCs, Gizmo? So I've got a Steam Deck that I have not unboxed yet. I'm planning to do a Steam Deck versus um, gaming laptop comparisons at some point. So I'm, I'm pretty in ex interested and excited about that. Okay, so we need to reset this. I forgot to change, uh, add the FPS to go above 144 FPS. So I got to go change that setting. Tenme says, hello, everyone. What did I miss? So uh, the biggest discoveries so far, I think, are the display quality being like two, what was it, 260-something nits brightness. So not as bright, not a 300 nits brightness display, but it's it's not as bad as the Katana display. It's a step up from there, but not by much. A little bit higher color gamut, a little higher contrast, a little higher nits. Um, we're looking at a 144 hertz display. Uh, that's an in-between display, not, not the ideal display for sure. Um, we need to go into launch properties and add this command. We have discovered that Hogwarts is very stuttery when you are only having eight gigs of RAM. It's not recommended. And it really was difficult to play because the stutters were so bad that uh, it was hard to dodge, it was hard to shoot, it was hard to aim. And that was on all low settings. The FPS on it was fantastic. We were getting over 100 FPS on low settings. But the 1% the lows made the game essentially unplayable, at least in combat. It was fine for running around as long as you're okay with stutters. But in combat, it was no good, which is, makes, to me, it unplayable. Um, the Legion 5, I think, is a great option for a budget system. Yeah. Have I reviewed and tested the GE77HX? I have not. I have not. I did the GE78, though, a couple days ago. So if you're looking for the 78, it's, it's there. If you go look for it. Let's go ahead and hop into settings. We need to change some stuff. We want no V-Sync. We're going to go... Uh, we could go up to 8 gigs on the textures, I believe. Everything else needs to be low, though. All right, and so that's everything on low. I want to apply these settings. Something with the power adapter um, keeps resetting. And it, it went into no power adapter mode again for some reason there. I don't know why. Uh, we weren't even in a game load, so it's uh, it's a bit weird. So that is something that's a, an issue with this laptop that I want resolved before I can wholeheartedly recommend this laptop because that, that's a non-starter, right? If the power adapter is, is cutting out on you, that's a non-starter for me. It makes it unrecommendable. Um, so I need to get to the bottom of what's causing it and hopefully resolve that issue. So what type of gamer would this be a good fit for? So $1,100 is close to bottom of the barrel in terms of budgeting. Um, you can go a little cheaper, like $600 or $800 for ultra, ultra budget machines. But um, the biggest issue right now, work we... We must have gone into battery mode again. I wonder if it's something related to this flex charge stuff. Let's do max battery charge. I had it down to 
just go down to like 70% or something, but I'm just going to set it to maximum. Let's do... I'm curious if you were to set this to a lower power limit, if you would run into that issue. Because my guess is that since we only have a 150 watt power adapter, we're just tapping out the power adapter and the power adapter is overheating. That would be my personal guess right now about what's happening. So if you were to go in here and lower the power limits, uh, maybe in this entertainment uh, pro performance profile, you might be able to get it to work with the, the power adapter. Um, I mean, picking up the power adapter, it's not really that hot anymore. So I don't, I don't know. I could just have a faulty power adapter. That's also an option in terms of what's going on here. But I, I unplug the power adapter right now. I'm going to plug it back in, watch the power limits on the GPU and CPU. They're coming right back now that I plugged it back in. Let's see how long they can hold. Notice our frame rate here. Our frame rate is excellent. And this feels like a fairly responsive display with a little bit of ghosting, but not atrocious ghosting. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and see what we get for our FPS. Oh yeah, this display is gonna be better for esports than what the Katana 15 was. I'm definitely not sensing as much of a delay for the input lag. I can aim just fine, but it is only 144 hertz. So 240 hertz is still better. Obviously, we're going to be able to push out the frame rates too to be able to hit that 144 FPS cap on the display or refresh rate cap. So that's also really great. So to me, that means that this laptop is going to be pretty dang good for an esports player on a budget. Not amazing necessarily because it's only 144 hertz display. Maybe you can get a 165 hertz if you spend a little more, or maybe even a 240 hertz if you spend a little more. But at least it'll be decent, and you'll have the the fourth gen, um, you know, RTX 4000 series GPU with it. I don't know. So. Uh, 246 FPS on average. We haven't lost. We haven't lost out on our uh, power adapter again yet. That's good. Is G-Sync active? That's a good question. I don't think this display is a G-Sync display. I don't really value G-Sync the way some people do. But uh, usually in budget systems, G-Sync is not usually factored in. And again, so indeed there is no G-Sync options in here. But I don't view G-Sync as a core, highly necessary thing. I think it's a nice thing to have uh, if possible. So. You need to try Flight Simulator. Nathan, the problem with Flight Simulator uh, and the reason why I don't benchmark it as much is because that sucker takes like three hours to install. And I can't install any other games while it's installing. So, um, and it's also a huge game. It's like 120 gigs. Uh, and, uh, and I only have a 512 gig hard drive. So if I installed that game, I have to uninstall and not test three other games. So... That's the reason right, why I only uh, benchmark it in my big benchmark games. Will you review the MSI Pulse 15 anytime soon? Uh, yes, I did order it. It should come in before the end of the month. So I should be able to do the MSI Pulse. How is the portability on this laptop? This laptop is phenomenal for, port for portability. It only weighs 4.2 pounds, and it's basically the same size as the Blade 16. Very minimal bezel, very portable overall system. Um, and the power adapter is very small, maybe even a little too small, you might say, underpowered, potentially, maybe. Yeah. So 
overall, this laptop is such a mixed bag for me, but as it is right now, I can't recommend it um, until we get some of these issues resolved, like with the power adapter. That's my biggest, that's my biggest deal breaker issue right now. Um, need to figure out what's going on with that. And if, if the power adapter is not powerful enough to actually power this system, then I mean, the only, the only possible solution in my mind is that Gigabyte starts shipping a more powerful power adapter with it. Um, I guess another potential solution, which is not great, is you could, you could limit the TDP on the CPU down to say 35 watts. And that would give us 10 watts of additional wiggle room. It would reduce our performance in CPU bound games, but not horribly so most likely. And so if we, I would just go ahead and just jump over here. Um, you know, if we did end up doing that, um, we probably wouldn't run into the power adapter issue anymore. Uh, one thing I will say is the keyboard is cool to the touch. WASD keys, everything is cool to the touch. The gaming experience is good in that sense. So um, there is no hotkey, as far as I can tell, for sound. I wish there was a vault. There probably, oh, there is one. Okay, I just, I'm blind. All right, I'm gonna turn up the sound so I can hear. Yeah, it's working. I really need to get a gun. There we go, got a couple of guns. Three hundred nits is very low these days. Uh, yeah, three hundred nits is low for a high-end laptop, but for budget for budget laptops, it's actually not that bad. Uh, being three hundred nits, I think three hundred nits is the target if you're looking at a laptop under twelve hundred dollars. If you're looking at a laptop that is, uh, I mean, I need a site for my scout. There's a site for the scout. Let's go shoot some people now. Oh, so close to killing that guy. We double headshot him. We had like 130 and he had 175 health. So I cracked two of them over here. Uh oh. Being charge rifled. So these speakers are not that amazing. Our frame rate is excellent though. 145. I'm being shot from multiple angles. Let's see if we can finish this guy. Yeah, finisher. No. <laughs> okay, so our, our frame rate was excellent. We averaged over 144 FPS. We haven't had the d adapter issue again. I'm, I need to play around with this laptop more to figure out what's going on with the, the adapter and uh, see if it's a cooling issue or if it's just uh, not enough wattage in general or what. Need to figure that out. And then I'm, I'm really curious if we were to repaste this thing and slap in more memory, would it be a much better laptop or not? I forgot how essential a number pad is for me. It forces me into bigger laptops because the build quality on most of the 16-inch laptops that have number pads is usually garbage. That's an interesting. I do love that this 4.2-pound laptop has a number pad. Um, that's pretty rare. Laptops under 4.5 pounds almost never have number pads. 
Yeah, Legions are one of the laptops that always have a number pad, at least uh, in the 16-inch size. And then... Um, yeah. So Legions, and then occasionally MSI does. Um, who else has number pads in under 16 inches? Asus does not. Razer does not. Alienware sometimes does, but Alienware lately does not. Huh. Okay, so we're running. A, we're gonna run Time Spy now, and we're gonna see what we get. And we're gonna do a basic overclock for Time Spy as well if we can. All right. So we don't have anything running in the background. Let's go ahead and see what we get in Time Spy. What happened to HP Omens? So Omen 17, I do have one coming in. It's uh, I, it's shipped actually, I think. So it should be coming in in the next few days. Uh, it was shipped earlier this week. MK says, are you going to add another 8 gig? I'm probably, if if I do swap out the RAM in this and we do a test uh, to see if the performance is any better, then what I'm probably actually going to do is take my RAM from, I don't know, take RAM from some other laptop, maybe the Strix G18, because that's easy to get in and out of, um, and slap it into here. So it would probably be changing out both sticks for a new set of 16. So not just adding eight. But uh, do I think the new G14 4090 is going to have good battery life? Uh, yeah, it's going to have great battery life because it's going to have a Ryzen. Wait, does it have a Ryzen CPU this year? I think it does. It does have a Ryzen CPU, I think. So it should have excellent battery life. Um, I think the... Uh, uh, well, gaming, obviously, it's going to have sucky battery life because anytime you game, it's always bad um, in gaming laptops in general. But, um, but yeah, no, that, that should have some good battery life, I think. The 4090 is 80 TGP. Uh, I think the 4090 in the G14 goes up to 120 watts. I think it can boost that high at least. Forty thousand series needs high TDP for high boost. Uh, well, it's interesting. The new Ada architecture does allow from for at least good performance at lower TDPs, um, better than three thousand series. Like it, three thousand series got really worse at the lower end TDPs. It was like a graph like this. The RTX four thousand series at least is a little bit more level. You still get more benefit from having high TDP. You get the best performance for having highest TDP, but it's not as big a difference. For, um, for RTX 4000. Would it be worth it to buy a Strix G18 4070? Yeah, it might be. It all depends on prices. But um, in general, I think the, the, the gap in performance between a 4070 and a 4080 is quite large uh, this year, just like it was between a 3060 and 3070 Ti. So the price difference... I think I think a 4070 is 1800 on the Strix G18. I think I might be wrong. I that's off the top of my head. I need to double check that. But if the price difference is 1800 versus 2500, that's a $700 gap. And if everything else is the same, $700, you're gonna go from like 1200 times spy to 18, 19,000 times spy. It's probably worth upgrading to the 4080. It would be almost a, the, it, it would probably be a very similar price to performance gain. Thoughts on the new Helios 16 and 18s? They look really promising, Josh. I think the new Helios 16 and 18s, especially if you get the mini LED version of them, look like they could be awesome. So, but, um, but in general, I just don't like, for myself, I don't like the Helios 18s build quality. I like the Asus laptops a bit better, the MSI laptops a bit better, and the Razer Blade 16 and 18 also have excellent build quality compared to, um, I just feel like the Helios ser series, it's not bad build quality, they just feel like a budget machine that's a premium price, I guess is what I would say. You know, like, I, I would prefer them to be a more premium external build. So to me, they need to be cheaper overall. 
Okay, so we got 9,000 for our GPU score, 8,719 for our CPU score. All right, so this is, um, so the primary thing to keep in mind, right? A 3070, a 3070 in a 4.2 pound laptop, what is that gonna score? Um, obviously a 3070 can go up to, uh, I mean, this is a 4060, so really we gotta primarily be comparing as 4060s. But some, some 3070s would score around this range, depending on the lower TDP end. But a 3060 at 75 watts, and we need to look up some actual numbers. I can't be pulling numbers. I can't remember them all these days. All right, so let's pull up some comparison numbers to, to look at here. Um, all right, so we can look at some of my old videos on my channel and we can see some numbers. Okay, so let's go, uh, what's an old review video for the 3060? So here's the Zephyrus G4. 4,960. This weighs slightly less than four pounds, so it's a very similar level. This has a 3060 80 watt. Okay, so 3060, 80 watt. This is going to be quite nearly the, the, the most similar levels of performance. Um, okay, so we got on the RTX 3060, 80 watt for $14.99 two years ago, we got 7465 And in this laptop for a 30... A 4060, 75 watts, only five watts difference. We got 15, 1600 more approximately on a 1600 increase. And let's just calculate that up for our speed. 9057 minus 7465, that's 1592 divided by 7465. So that's a 21.3% performance increase, gen on gen, if you were to say these laptops are a fair comparison. The Zephyrus G14 is a little bit smaller, a little bit more portable, even though it has a higher TDP. So, um, and it's obviously it's a more expensive laptop than what this one is. This one's $400 less with 21% higher levels of performance. All of um, my game. I don't see a 3050 Ti in here, but I think I did do a 3050 Ti not too long ago. Um, so what, what does this mean to me? Uh, well, one thing I wanna point out is that if you go with a thicker, more, uh, more powerful 3060, like 130 watt one, say in a Legion 5, your performance is gonna be more comparable to this, okay? In terms of raw rasterization performance. Um, I'm pretty sure a 3060 can score at least 8,000 with a high TDP 3060. Let's see if we can find an example of that. Um, I'm not sure if uh, I did any of those on my reviews. Here's a 3070. Okay, so here's a Legion 7 3060, all right? Let's go to the Time Spy for a Legion 7 3060. Six test as well as the Heaven Bench. Then I mentioned now, so you're quiet degrees and 68 degrees. This is what the quiet fan profile sounds like. How does the Legion 7 959? Okay, so the $1,700 Legion 7, $1,700 Legion 7 from two years ago got 89.59. So almost the exact same score, but it cost $600 more two years ago. Nowadays though, something like that is gonna be priced pretty dang close to this. And the Legion 7 was a much higher build quality, better quality display device. I would say it's a better overall device than this one. So that's some things to keep in mind. Um, so if you can find yourself, snag yourself a deal 
on an old generation CPU 3060. That's a high TDP wattage for around $1,100. It's probably a little bit better deal than this. Um, you don't get frame gen. In terms of raw performance, though, it's going to be very neck and neck, very similar to this. Um, let's try overclocking this guy and seeing what we get. Now, the other thing, right, the, the thing I want to point out here, once again, the 3060 was the third best GPU from two years ago and last gen. It was the best, third best GPU from last gen, too. But... The, the 4060 is the fourth best CPU. So if you were to actually compare apples to apples in terms of how the pricing tiers work, you'd be looking at 3050 Ti's instead. Uh, so let's just see if we can find a 3050 Ti in my past reviews here. Um, I should have done one or two of them. Let's see here. Uh, 3050 Ti. I think I did a 3050 Ti live stream recently. Let's see here. Uh, 3050. That's a 3060. So yeah, the Lenovo IdeaPad. This one was done with a 3050 Ti. Let's see if we can find... our time spy score from this. Here's the time spy test. I need to get timestamps done on this. But this laptop was purchased now for $600. So that's the thing to keep in mind. And I think this laptop is the kind of laptop that will go on sale in the coming years. It'll go, it'll go down to $800 and maybe eventually $600, given enough time. So it's, it's one of those things where it's like... So we're still doing... Dang, okay. I don't see where we did the test. Maybe by the end. I really need to get the... Uh... Here it is. Okay, so here's the test. So 3050 Ti and we got 6,125. So this is 50% faster than that. So pretty interesting result overall. So it's a 50% tier on tier, but on gen on gen... Um, with the same level of wattage, we were looking at 21% gain uh, in terms of time spy. And then if you factor in frame gen, obviously all the results and stuff go out the window. Let's go ahead and try to overclock this GPU. Uh, we'll try for a 150, 500, starting overclock and see if we get any kind of instability. And then I'm gonna look at chat and try to answer some chat questions, okay? So we're gonna be doing some overclocking here and then I'll answer any questions and do a wrap up summary for this laptop. I need to go here, I need to go here, there we go, all right. Okay. Thirty fifty is such a bad car. Only four gigs of VRAM. Uh, yeah, it's going to be good for basic gaming only, pretty much. Uh, but I think they're releasing a new thirty fifty that has six gigs of VRAM, right? Okay. MM says this. This gen should be judged on its wattage, in my opinion. Uh, but the base pricing and naming convention from NVIDIA is just egregious. It's so confusing for consumers. And that's why I am really most upset about NVIDIA changing everything. But I can also understand why they would do that. I just wish that if they changed the naming, they should have at least tried to keep all the pricing and the pricing tiers the same. Like... A 4050, maybe starting at $800 would have been more reasonable. 4060, start at 1000 
um, you know, 4070s or like 1500, which they are, but they at least need to be gen on gen performance improvements as well. That's the other thing. They should have really tried to focus on making sure there's at least a 10% bump gen on gen in raw rasterization and not just lean entirely on frame gen. Um, but, um, but yeah, so, so far I'm looking, I don't see any artifacting going on with our time spy window. So that's good. Antonio Jackson, I just came in. How's the laptop? Stay tuned. I'm going to be doing a wrap up summary of everything we found out about it here shortly. We're just trying to do a, a GPU overclock and seeing what kind of gains we can get on this guy with like, say, we're, we're going to shoot for a 200, 500, um, overclock. So we're going to see if we're going to be stable. With this, we'll see. And man, could NVIDIA just add an M? Um, yeah, I think I think that the biggest thing is they either need to add an M or just say RTX 4090 laptop. Like it, they should have a requirement to say the word laptop after the GPU name. Something like that should fix any confusion. Either put M or laptop, whatever. In general, I try to put laptop um, I don't do it very well consistently, but I think that's what would help the most is always just including laptop afterwards. So NVIDIA really pushed DLSS 3. Their own hardware gets gimped. The reason I'm skipping this gen and wait for another 4,000 series or 5,000 entirely. So um, I, I mean, I, I really think DLSS 3 with frame gen is awesome. I, I, don't, I don't blame NVIDIA for leaning heavily into it. The problem is it puts all of the consumers in a bind because... There's not enough games that feature DLSS 3 to make it truly 100% compelling yet. But the main thing that's compelling about it is future-proofing for single-player games. Now, if you're a competitive multiplayer gamer, though, like me, you don't really need, you don't really need to upgrade at all, really. Um, for me, upgrading this gen is more about uh, the CPU performance for my rendering my video editing, and the display quality for my video editing and enjoyment of the laptop. And then for me, going to the Blade 18 is also about having a large screen device and a small portable form factor that is super powerful, has great speakers, um, and it's just a general better user experience than what the Legion 7i was at a 16-inch display. Um, I love the audio. I love being able to play Hogwarts on it with just the speakers. And it's a fantastic spatially aware video gaming experience where I just play on the laptop screen and keyboard. Um, so, And it works really well for playing on my projector. So Carla, my girlfriend, she'll watch on the projector. I'll put the projector running. I'll play Hogwarts at QHD resolution. I'm hitting like over 200 FPS with DLSS on like um, balanced, I believe, or maybe performance mode. At QHD, everything's set on ultra, ray tracing on ultra, to over 200 FPS. Um, and so I'm seeing the 240 FPS or 200 FPS. And then she's seeing the full resolution of the projector at QHD. It's only 60 frames per second up there, which is fine for just watching. And uh, it's a great combination, a great way to play. Because I can't really play the widescreen monitor and the projector at the same time unless I don't I down the resolution of the widescreen monitor. So it's, it's interesting. And then because I'm playing over the projector, I also get the Sonos sound system. So that's also awesome. Anyway. All right. So our overclock looks stable. Let's try running time spy again, seeing what we get with a bit of an overclock now. All right. This gen, I think, I think this generation of upgrades is about display quality. It's about new designs, redesigning the laptops, and some of them are just a lot better. Um, this gen is also about uh, the RTX 4080 and 4090 are awesome, but the lower end C, uh, the lower end GPUs, the 4050, 4060, 4070, those GPUs really aren't that much better than the, the 3000 series in terms of raw performance. They're only massively better when you factor in frame gen. So they become, I think RTX 4050, 4060, 4070 are way more future proof with their frame gen technology. Um, that said, I hope one day NVIDIA 
decides to release frame generation technology to RTX 3000 series as well and 2000 series, if it's possible. I hope. They say it's not possible, but we'll see. Agreed, man. The benchmark sites can do why chat NVIDIA. I'm sorry, I didn't understand that question. Um, the with girl setup projector is awesome. Yeah, it's for, it's it's pretty sweet. It's a great way to play games with someone else because they can watch you, they can watch the storyline or whatever. And uh, and the audio is really great for everybody because it's like surround sound Sonos in this room. And then I can still see a really high refresh rate, gorgeous display to play on as well. So. If they do, then the low-tiered RTX 4000 series becomes useless. Well, uh, she key, that's only going to be true if you're factoring the, like, if you're lining up the 4070 versus the 3070 Ti, it becomes useless. But like I've said over and over, the pricing tiers are actually the 4070 is equal in GPU tier to the 3060. They're both the third best, and they should be priced at the same level. Um, if they're not priced at the same level, then I wouldn't advise to buy a 4070, right? Um, the other thing is the 4000 series also seems to have better performance in ray tracing because they have uh, more, I believe, RT cores basically in the GPU, the, part of the ADA architecture. So you should see some bumps in ray tracing performance, relatively speaking. <sighs> There's a lot of things about... Um, the 4000 series being like a four nanometer architecture, meaning that it might be more power efficient, but at the high levels of TDP, that's where the 3000 series is closest in performance with 4000 series. Overall, I do think a 3070 Ti is a fantastic buy right now versus the 4000 series if you get it at the right price point. But like some of the 3070 Ti's are still so overpriced. Like you could, if you bought a 3070 Ti, at a bad price, you could still pay like $2,500, $3,000 for a 3070 Ti. And a 3070 Ti gets absolutely trashed by a 4080, RTX 4080, because those are the tiers that match up. Like a 4080 is the same tier, the second best as a 3070 Ti. So if you were to match a 3070 Ti versus a 4080 at a $2,500 price point, a 4080 in the Strix G18 crushes the 3070 Ti in both raw performance and with frame gen. So, so yeah, it's so much confusion from NVIDIA marketing. Goodness, it's so annoying to deal with as a reviewer. Okay, wow, we got a f almost 450 point increase by overclocking, 9490. All right, and I, maybe we could even push that overclock a little further too. Um, but, uh, but yeah, anyway, so let's go ahead and jump into the summary wrap up for this laptop. All right. So I'm going to turn this on again. And I'm going to scoot this just out of the way. And let's swap those fans down. And let's wrap up. All right. So. Let's talk about everything we've discovered, all right? For a budget laptop, I like the build quality on here. The keyboard is nice. Um, it's not the most amazing keyboard, but it's got great functionality, great layout, um, and decent-ish backlight. It's a budget keyboard, though. It's not amazing necessarily, but it's good for the money. The display quality was like 260-something nits, not quite 300 nits. The, the display response rate was pretty good though. You could play eSports on this pretty well. Um, the color gamut was also pretty low. It only at 61% on my Spider 5. In reality, it's probably closer to 70% sRGB um, if you were measured with another tool. So it's not awful on the display color gamut, but it's not amazing, right? It's, it really, there are laptops out there that have a lot better displays that are higher color gamut and brighter. So if you can, 
Uh, if you're someone who wants a higher quality display, I say go for a different laptop that has a better quality display. If you're someone who's not as picky with their displays, this laptop display is not as awful. It's not awful. It's like, okay. That's what I'll say. It's okay. It's not good. It's not great. It's in the okay. I give it like a 5.5 out of 10 or something. So for the money, and I think an RTX 4060 is good value at $1,100. If you're going to use this on an external display, awesome. Now, the let's let's keep going. We'll go through all the all the different things here, right? So the the touchpad here is a little more premium feeling than most budget laptops, I think. It's a nice shape and it's a nice size. Um, it feels kind of like glass, but I'm pretty sure it's plastic. The the laptop port selection is actually pretty good for a budget laptop. We've got, I didn't, I didn't go over the ports, so let's go over the ports. All right, so on this side, we have got a uh, headset. On this side, we've got a um, USB 3.2, we've got a USB 2.0, we've got a mic port, and we've got a headset port, okay? And then, on the rear of the device, we have our power port. Let me try to get this positioned a little better. Here we go. On the rear of the device, we have our power port, our mini display port 1.4, which you're gonna be able to put um, high frames out to really big resolution monitors with that port. We have an HDMI 2.0, not 2.1. That's a little sad. Uh, then we have another, so we have a USB-C 3.2 there on the back. All right, so we have uh, one USB-C on the back and we've got another one over here on this side. Now this is, this over here is gigabit ethernet, okay? So we've got one gigabit ethernet, not 2.5 gigabit. Then we have a USB 3.2 on this side. Uh, so that's another high-speed USB-C. No Thunderbolt though, okay? This is an i5 processor. And then we also have a micro SD card slot right here. So. Micro SD card slots are nice. Maybe if you need to transfer a lot of things from your phone back and forth from the laptop, but it's not necessarily as good as a full size SD card slot, right? But it's nice to have it if you if you eventually need it. Um, so the port selection on this, I think is pretty dang good for the money, but it's not amazing. It's like, uh, I, I can't remember what I rated it, but it's probably around a 7.5 or eight out of 10 for the ports. The the portability on this thing is really, really good at 4.2 pounds. This thing is lightweight and it feels fairly sturdy. It'll go in a backpack bag and go with you easily. The power adapter, let me just grab that guy. I got all the cables um, wrapped around each other here, hold on. So the power adapter, we did show this earlier in the live stream, but it's very small, very, very tiny power adapter. Honestly, maybe even too small. It's only 150 watts. And we did run into issues where the laptop was plugged in and we were losing power. So either the power adapter was underpowered and it was like short circuiting, um, which could be happening, or it was overheating and needing to cool down. So if it was overheating, like it was right behind the laptop for a while, and I think that's what caused it to overheat. That's my current prediction that it was overheating. Um, there's a few solutions you can use to solve that without getting a different power adapter. Like you could limit the CPU uh, power limit down by like 10 watts or so, or maybe even the GPU power limit by like five or 10 watts. And you would be able to not have the power adapter issue happen anymore because it's right on the edge, it seems like. But that's far from ideal. You don't want to have to to power limit your laptop further if possible, right? Because you end up losing a little bit of performance, probably like 5% five, 5 performance loss uh, from power limiting the CPU or GPU down a little bit more. So that's not what I want. That's not what I would like. Um, but there are solutions without necessarily having to fully replace that power adapter. Um, now, as far as heating goes, we did see some high temps on the CPU. We saw some high temps um, on the GPU hotspot, but the GPU was fine overall for temps. It wasn't thermal throttling or anything like that, but the CPU was hitting very high temps to the point where it was probably thermal throttling sometimes. That might've caused some stutters. We did run into some stuttering with DD only having eight gigs of DDR4-3200. You definitely want 16 gigs minimum 
if you want a stutter-free experience in games like Hogwarts. So if you buy this laptop as it is, you'll probably want to repaste the CPU so your CPU temps go below uh, thermal throttling and you might be able to push the CPU performance a little higher. Um, our C Cinebench R23 score was actually pretty good, I think, for an R5, or sorry, for an i5. Um, and we got like 13,800 for a 10 minute score on a budget CPU. I feel that was pretty good, but we were hitting thermal throttling the whole time. So you might want to power limit the CPU down to like 65 or 70 Watts to prevent the thermal temps from going as high, or you could repaste the CPU to get massively better temps. I'm guessing probably a 10 or 15 degree drop in temperatures. If you did that, um, I think from a budget perspective, there are going to be laptops that will be a better deal out there. And the issues we ran into during today's testing leaves me with a sour taste. It makes it hard for me to just openly recommend this. So I need to find solutions for the problems I encountered during today's live stream before I can recommend this. So currently, I'm not recommending this laptop, but I think if the, if the solutions can be fixed, for example, um, primarily, if I can figure out a way to make the power adapter not cut out on me at all, then that will help. But the fact that out of the box, it cuts out on you is not good. And I think it's something that Gigabyte, uh, or in this case, Clevo, because Clevo is the original manufacturer of this laptop, needs to address, either in a BIOS update or a driver update or something. They need to lower the power limits on something in here, either the CPU or GPU, a little bit further to prevent the power adapter from going out, or they need to ship with a like 175 watt power adapter instead of a 150 watt. Those are the solutions to fix this problem. Um, yeah, the, 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 per, the kind of person that would buy this laptop is someone who's on a budget, like a college student, or maybe someone who wants something a little more businessy, because uh, this is a pretty businessy looking laptop, uh, but they want a game on the side. Um, I, there are some really great things about this laptop, like the fact that it has a 4060 for only $1,100. Uh, $1, you can get a 4050 for $1,000, but I, I guarantee you, you're gonna wanna get a second eight gig RAM stick, which is probably gonna cost you at least another $40, $50, and then you'll have to take it apart and put that in there. Um, and then the CPU, temperatures could probably be fixed by a repaste job. So if you're the kind of person who's up for all of that and potentially up for tweaking the power limits to get the power adapter to not go out on you, then maybe you could buy this thing and be very happy with it. But if you're, if doing those things is like very intimidating to you and doesn't sound interesting to you, you want to buy a laptop that works perfectly out of the box. Don't buy this laptop for sure. Do not, I do not recommend it to anyone that's like that. Okay. Um, that's a, that's a default, like do not buy for me. Um, so right now it's like, I've got like a caution sign that says I need to do more testing before I can recommend this. I got to figure out what's going on, um, with it. But I think this laptop has tremendous potential still. I'm not necessarily saying that it's a trash heap, especially since it does have a better display than what some of the MSI laptops are coming with. So those, that's kind of my summary. I mean, you can do business with almost any gaming laptop, especially if you if you turn off the the RGB in, in them. So, um, yeah. All right. So I'm just looking at chat, see if there's any other questions, but um, but yeah. I mean, I wish I wish this thing had 16 gigs of RAM. That's probably the biggest wish I had for it. That and the power adapter issue. Those were the two biggest issues that I ran into with it. Um, the CPU temperatures are kind of to be expected, in my opinion, and are not necessarily a deal breaker for me for recommending it. It's just kind of like a cautionary thing. Like you could get more performance if you repasted it, but the power adapter needs to be fixed. And the RAM being only eight gigs means that certain games that need more RAM are just not gonna play well at all. So, um, so yeah. How much money is this laptop? This laptop is $1,099 on Newegg. There are links in the video description if you want to check it out. Um, yeah. Still can't believe the minimum this laptop, Jen, is uh, $1,000. Well, I mean, that's that's uh, pretty close. Wasn't that what we had before? 
I mean, launch price pretty much was that. I mean, you you could get a 3050 or 3050 Ti for like eight hundred dollars, but those were like way worse than even this thing. So, I mean, in terms of like RAM, like it would be like two fifty six gig SSD with like maybe only four or eight gigs of RAM and like a 60 hertz display. At least this has a 144 hertz full HD display that's good for eSports. I mean, that's good. Um, that's much better. So I just wish that this had at least 16 gigs of RAM. That would be so much better, so much easier to recommend this. And then I wish we didn't have the power adapter issue. So um, yeah, so that's, those are my thoughts. I'm kind of repeating myself at this point. So I think that wraps up pretty much everything about the laptop for now. More testing required. And I'll probably do a follow-up video after I do more testing um, or do a follow-up live stream comparing this with something like the Lenovo IdeaPad 3 maybe. I don't know, we'll see. Um, but yeah, so that's my thoughts so far right now on the Gigabyte G5. Lots of potential, but some serious issues that need to be addressed. Um, yeah. But as it is right now, can't recommend it to the typical user. More advanced users may proceed cautiously if you think that these issues are not deal breakers for you. So right now, that's my thoughts. I'll see you guys in the next live stream. Thank you so much for tuning in, everyone. And be sure to subscribe for follow-up videos. I've got lots of other laptops coming in and lots of more comparison videos. I've got a GT77 versus SCAR18 benchmark comparison coming out. I believe I'll do that tomorrow, maybe the day after. Um, and then I've got a Zephyrus G16 with an RTX 4060 with a better quality to screen coming in from Best Buy, it costs 1449. I'll be doing a live unboxing of that also very soon. So I'll see you guys in the next live stream. Thank you so much for watching. Brandon out.